Welcome to Frank B. Fur Field in Meadville, Pennsylvania. It is a great battle today. Beautiful day for football overcast skies. The Gators of Allegheny playing host to the Golden Tornadoes of Geneva. They first played each other all the way back in 1899. I'm not even sure they were wearing leather helmets back then. Who knows what they were doing and what they had to dodge into the field. But they're coming, they're playing today, and it's going to be a good matchup. Exactly. we got two solid teams in the PAC um, battling it out today on a nice, cool, crisp day. It feels like fall a little bit. Who are the key players for today? We'll start off with the Geneva side of the field. For the Geneva side of the field, we have number one, Hilton McLean. Uh, so last week, he only had two grabs for 13 yards. So we want to speed him the ball. Geneva's going to want to get him started today. Um, last year, um, he had two long touchdowns, one with being 71 yards. Mm -hmm. um, so against Allegheny, he was a big factor last year. So hopefully, they can get him to him again. Now, the Gators got to get their offense going as well, and they are led by? Declan O'Brien. So number 15, Declan O'Brien. Um, he had two touchdowns last week with the game winner. Um, in overtime, and so he's very, very important to get this game going for the uh, for the Gators. And this is a really important game for both teams. Allegheny has the opportunity to start the season off 2-0 and with a big victory today, and the Golden Tornadoes, they're a little concerned right now. They lost big last week to CMU, and now they're looking to be able to get back on the winning side of things. This could be a very pivotal matchup for both teams. Exactly, and uh, especially for the Geneva Golden Tornadoes, coming off a big loss, 31-0, um, but on the stat sheet, it says a little different. In the first half, they had 209 yards um, of rushing, so they really just um, started that first half really sol solid, and the second half, they kind of fell off a little bit. Hopefully, they can get that run game going. There you go. Brandon Lair getting his first win last week, just came to the program. Really big victory for him to get the program started. And then you know, on the other side, you have Gino DeMarco, who in his 31st year, coming off of back-to-back -back losses, won to start the season, won to finish the season last year. That's not happened for quite a long time at Geneva. They're ready to turn things around. Exactly. And we see both teams are just eager for another win. And we will get to it. Let's look at today's keys of the game. What do you see as being important for Allegheny? We'll start with the Gators this time. What's key for them? So Allegheny, it's very, very important to stay disciplined. They're going against a tough triple option team. They prepared all week for this. It's all about doing your job and knowing your assignment because as soon as someone doesn't do their job that's when big plays happen and then we also see uh, rely on your playmakers okay you have three huge players for the Allegheny offense you have Jack Johnson the quarterback Declan O'Brien and Trey Worship all of those combined for a total of 500 yards almost of um, total yards last week um, in week one and then now we flip over to Geneva and then we see the first part is splash plays okay so last year we saw that they had an onside kick recovery. They had two long touchdowns, one being 71 yards to Hilton McLean. Splash plays are very important, especially because they want to control the game with the line of scrimmage, which brings me to my last one, control the line of scrimmage. The run game is very, very important to this Geneva offense, especially with um, offense line and defensive line. They want to get to the quarterback as well. So D-line and offensive line play is going to be very important today. The Golden Tornadoes of Geneva and the Gators of Allegheny. We're about to have kickoff coming up in just a matter of moments right here from Meadville at Frank B. Fuhrer Field. I'm Robert Mangino along with Alex Terrett. The game kicks off coming up next. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission. Providing great patient care. Delivering babies. Healing hearts. Detecting cancer early. Stitching wounds. And holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years. Washington Health System. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. Welcome back to Frank B. Fur Field, and we are scheduled for kickoff right now. North Allegheny winning the toss. They've elected to defer, and they will kick off to Geneva. And the kick, nice deep kick right up the middle of the field. Return from the goal line up the middle. 
Breaking it over to the left-hand side, Allegheny able to get pursued down and tackled at the 24-yard line. Garrett Paxton with the kick and the return by uh, Hilton, I'm sorry, Landon Smith on the return on that. Geneva huddling over on the sideline. This is going to be a very important uh, series here for Geneva, wanting to establish the run in order to get control of this game. And that's what's important um, is to see that this offense gets started early on and get that running game started. Like I said, control the line of scrimmage. That's what we want to see in this very first play. And they sent up under center, number seven, Darren Myers, snap and immediately taken down after a handoff, loss of one on the play. A great penetrating defensive move. That's a great, great first start. Get to the quarterback early on, stop that dive right away. Geneva with the ball second and 12 on their own 23 yard line. Got to make it to about the 34, maybe call it 11. Everybody's in tight, one wide out. Fading back to pass, looking deep down the left-hand side, has a man, can he get him? He does, complete, he's running down the sideline, can he get all the way in? No. Taken out inside the 15, absolutely remarkable play, Hilton McLean for the Golden Tornadoes. And that's where we go, first play, second play, it goes straight down the field to Hilton McLean, our player to watch, and that's that splash play I was looking for. They're lining up quick. They were huddling up and taking their time the first couple of plays, but no, they're going right back to the line of scrimmage. Darren Meyer is lining them up, looking back over to the sideline, figuring out what it is that they're going to call. They're bundled up tight. Two wide receivers over to the left-hand side. They're set. And now resetting one more time. Inside handoff. Great, powerful run. He just keeps on dragging players. What a remarkable run by it looks like Landon Smith. So that's Josh, Josh Seister right there. We see okay. our fullback. Okay, the first part of the triple option is the dive. That's the dive with the fullback. Right. And then zero number zero, Josh Seister had 93 yards rushing last week. Um, so we're going to see something um, involving him this week a lot. He is really really powerful in the way he ran that ball, just breaking tackles as you were able to see. All right now. Geneva, first and goal from inside the five. They're about at the four. Inside handoff once again to Silve Sister, Josh Sister in the end zone. What a remarkable drive for Geneva. Uh, big, big throws, big runs, and now they're up 6 nothing. Exactly. Josh Slicer is going to be huge for this game. That first dive play, if we cannot control the line of scrimmage as the Allegheny Gators just did not, you can see that the dive is wide open, then it's going to open up the option later on in the game. Ryan Rittler now for the extra point attempt. And they're looking to get another guy who didn't realize that he was supposed to be a part of the extra point team. Maybe just celebrating the big, kick, the big touchdown. And now they're back. Huge drive for Geneva to start things off. Down, kick, up. And good. And Geneva now taking a 7 nothing lead. 13-29 to go in the first quarter. 7 nothing. The Golden Tornadoes over the Gators. Back and forth. Why call two men in a truck? If you're like Joe, you need to move your business without moving a single meeting. The word stop isn't in your vocabulary. You want it handled with no hitches, no glitches, and no sweat. That's why you call two men in a truck. Two men in a truck. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. 
The main thing you can expect from us here at Loway is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. You can now get more local news on KDKA Plus. More breaking news. Residents are being asked to stay outside of their house. More community stories. More weather. A couple of funnel clouds were spotted. Weekdays at 12:30 on KDKA Plus. If you missed the first 90 seconds, you missed a lot of this game already. 7-0. The Golden Tornadoes over the Gators of Allegheny. And Alex, you were talking about the big playmaker to watch for. Geneva, Hilton McLean, big touch, big reception down the left sideline, and then a big score by John Sister. Exactly. They came out swinging early. Um, usually they like to take their time, you know, establish the run game first and then go to the air. Instead, they went with the air and then established the run game right after. And now we're looking to see how Allegheny is able to respond to this. They've had a difficult time in the first quarter over the past season, uh, but under new leadership, new head coach you gotta wonder what the setup is going to be as they look to return this the kick a squibbler down the sideline it stays it rolls right out of bounds at about the 13 yard line number 24 allowing it to go out of bounds for allegheny geneva now allegheny now taking over control of the ball they start things off, and you look at what they're going to have to do to respond. What did, is it? How do you how do you see them coming out and with this first possession? Allegheny's offense: uh, Zach Johnson, I'm sorry, Jack Johnson at quarterback, uh, Trey Worship, and Declan O'Brien. The, the, really, the trio that really drives this off. Exactly, and they can just look on the other side of the field and the other team, and just do exactly what they did. Become aggressive. Look for those deep balls. Jack Johnson's a great quarterback, and he likes to throw for a lot of yards, get to his targets, and let's see if they move down the field. Officials looking to get the right football in the play. It may have been a uh, kickoff ball instead, uh, one of the special teams balls. And now they're moving the spot as well. Initially, it was on the near sideline. It looks as though they're moving it over to the uh, more middle of the field. And now they're bringing it back over as well. The De Geneva defense uh, up on your screen at this point. And they are led by some pretty impressive uh, men. Gabe Trexler last week leading the team in tackles. We also see some of these cornerbacks. They like to ball hawk. They like to get those interceptions. Allegheny with the ball. Handoff from the shotgun formation. Pick up of about one, maybe two yards on the play. Trying to establish that run to get things started. They like to use these running backs a lot. They like to establish ground game. Um, we're going to see this open up the offense a lot. Uh, as soon as they get a little bit more push, they got four, three, four yards on that one. They want to keep, keep it rolling. Trade worship with about three yards on the play, second and seven from their own 38-yard line. Shotgun formation, three wide receivers wide, two to the right, one to the left. Looking over the defense, they're in a two deep at this point, man in motion. Snap and a clap, inside handoff, number 15, gets it on the sweep all around the right-hand side, trying to find that edge. Picks up some really good yardage on that play. They like to use the jet sweep a lot, and the important part with the jet sweep is you can see um, if they're in man or zone. And then you can see if they're in man, you can either pull it, give it to the give it to Declan O'Brien coming around the edge, or maybe pull it and then go deep. Uh, two plays, you get it to your two, two, two key guys, Trey Worship and Declan O'Brien back-to-back plays. Now you're looking at a third and two for Allegheny from their own 43-yard line, far side of the field. Shotgun formation, everybody's in tight. A clap, gets it, back to pass. Pass over to the right-hand side. Nice out into the flat. Number 23, Kyrie Miller with the reception. We like to see some more deception. We like to see a lot of motions. Then we see other people getting involved, not just our top three playmakers. First down for Allegheny. They're now at their 49-yard line, far side of the field. And really nice start so far. Spreading the ball out, different playmakers getting the opportunity to show what they can do. And just showing different looks to this defense. Keep the defense on their toes. Jack Johnson more in the pistol formation at this point. Three wide receivers out, tight end, handoff. Worship gets it, moving up the middle. Picking up a really tough two yards on that play. Now we see this D-line starting to get a little bit of penetration. Those linebackers are really shooting through the gaps, trying to close that run game off and then make them throw the ball. Second and eight for Allegheny. 
We're at 11.25 in a running clock in the first quarter. Geneva up 7-0 if you just joined us. Two uh, big pass play uh, down the left-hand side for Geneva and some great running, and we'll give you more details about that coming up. But first, though, uh, Johnson in the shotgun formation. Three wide receivers wide. Takes a snap, back the pass, quick slant over to Declan. And he's able to put up a stiff arm, trying to get that first down yardage. Looks as though he's a little bit short, maybe a yard shy. And that's just a little hitch route. Trying to get the ball to your playmaker. Let him move around, let him make some space. Let him get some yards. Third and one, very manageable, very... You, you, this is where you want to be. When you're hosting a team like this, like Geneva, they can control the ball. They can obviously score quick. You want to be in a good third and short situation. You want to keep the clock running. You want the time of possession um, to start increasing. Keep the ball on your side. Don't let the Geneva offense get back on the field. Jack Johnson, pistol position, snap, inside handoff, no fakes it. Quick slant over to Declan O'Brien. Great completion, and now it's a first and 10 at the 30, 29 yard line. Great reception, great pass. It's a great RPO design. We see that Jack Johnson faking it to the running back, pulls it, doesn't like it, no you see on the inside, and gives it to his playmaker out in space. A little quick slant round over the middle. Nice, easy completion. Nice run pass option play right there. Played to perfection. Jack Johnson, shotgun formation once again. Trey Worship in the backfield behind him. Two to the right, one to the left. Clap. He's looking over to the left-hand side, finds Declan O'Brien again. Can he break a tackle? Able to a bit, able to pick up a lot of key yardage afterwards. Those yards after the catch, critical. Yards after the catch are huge, um, especially when you have a smaller receiver like Declan O'Brien. He likes to move around. He likes to use his hips. He likes to shift around, agile player. This is what we call free access when you have the um, receiver by himself, mm -hmm. and he, likes, he gives a signal to the quarterback and then allows him to, to kind of make that play design on the fly. Nice. So we're looking at a second and six now for the Gators of Allegheny. 9.30 to go in the first quarter. And they have a drive that is answering Geneva's touchdown drive to open the game. Jack Johnson, shotgun, takes it inside handoff to Worship. He's going over the right-hand side looking for the corner. Not able to get it, but very close to first down yardage. Very, very close. We'll see where they ultimately mark it and whether or not the referees are going to wave them through. It looks as though they are first down for the Gators. And as a head coach, you love to see your playmakers blocking in space, especially on your outside receivers. You like to see your receivers blocking. Sometimes a lot of them just run off routes, especially um, when you're down in the red zone. Blocking, mm -hmm. staying on your blocks is so important. Allegheny, first and 10 from the 19, driving into the red zone. Take the snap, hand off the warship up the middle, and Geneva really sniffing that one out. That's that defensive line. They really want to get pressure. Um, they just want to stop that run game and then allow their um, corners to be a little bit more aggressive on the outside um, and maybe try and sniff one out and pick one off. Second and 10 now for Allegheny. Looks as though they may have been able to pick up just a little bit, but it isn't much. It's just outside of the 18-yard line. 8.24 to go in the first quarter, looking for an answer drive to Geneva's quick scoring drive that opened the game. Johnson takes a snap, finds a receiver out to the left flat, able to make the completion. What a grab, run after the catch. He is close to the goal line, knocked over the pylon. However, they're not going to give it to him. They're saying he stepped out inside the four. When you see this little out route by Ian Dursey, Ian Dursey takes his way up. And then you see, you see number 12 on for Geneva trying to make that play, make that pick. Um, he went a little too aggressive on that one and allowed the guy to get past him. First and goal at the four. And it looks as though the Gators are taking the opportunity that they have available to them. And they're looking for a score here to tie things up. The big question is, can they do it? Two wide receivers over to the left. Inside handoff once again to number 23, Kyle, Kyrie, Merler, Kyrie Miller. And he was stuffed immediately. Actually a loss on the play. Lost about two, maybe three yards. When you get a, a team that's just rolling down the field, and then you see that first run play after a long series of pass plays, and you get that stop. It kind of gets you back in the rhythm, your defense, defensive line. Get a little more confidence in them so that whenever they finally pull it for a throw, they can get to the quarterback. 
Second and goal from just outside their six. Four wide receivers. Two to the left, two to the right. Jack Johnson once again, shotgun more like a pistol with Worship behind him. He's immediately looking to throw, finds a man wide open. Touchdown pass number, I believe that is 18. Number 18, Austin Williams coming down with the catch and a touchdown. So we call this a little Patriot concept. We have the tight end running a corner route to the back of the end zone. And then we have the two receivers on the outside running little mini digs to try and suck up those um, corners and safeties to free our tight end in the back of the end zone. We're looking at what could be a tie score here as they're lining up for the extra point. It's down, it's up, and the referees say it is good. The game is now tie 7-7. So we saw Alex Geneva come down and really make a presence in that first drive. A couple of big plays and then a huge run for the touchdown and then Allegheny coming back and answering directly afterwards. And then that's what you expect from two teams that have really, really good offenses. They like to score. They like to move the ball. And then you see each team's kind of having their way with each defense. Um, you're going to see a lot of different play calls coming up. Um, now that they know that some things are working, they can kind of move to other options of the game, um, of the other options of their offense, and then see that maybe we'll, maybe we'll, the defense will start stepping up. And they see, they've seen all the different passes of the playbook, um, and then now they're going to have to make some adjustments. When you're at this stage of the season, is it the offense that has the advantage over the defense two games in? Exactly. When you're watching film, um, you don't really have much to go off of after week one. Um, you see, it depends on who they're playing. You have a, a Geneva team that is not as conventional as some other teams in the PAC, um, so it's kind of hard to plan for them. So Allegheny's had a tough time, and especially um, in this game so far. Garrett Paxton to kick and set back to return. Number one, David Babb, and he lets it go in and out of the end zone, and it'll be a touchback, and then they'll take possession here, I believe, at the 25-yard line. 25-yard line for Geneva. Geneva's offense, they are led by their quarterback, Darren Myers, who is uh, starting for the first time for a full season here. And a bit of a tough week last week. They really leaned heavily on Josh Seister, who got that big touchdown earlier. That's a great way to get a new quarterback kind of feeling um, a little bit better about being in the system. Um, getting that fullback, getting Josh Seister a little moving, um, getting those easy yards. Darren Myers, hands off quick. Over the left-hand side, number seven, able to rush up the sideline. Way to go, Darren Myers, able to make... Uh, Darren Myers keeping the ball himself, able to get up over the left-hand side and pick up what is a first down out to the 41-yard line of Geneva. We see that Allegheny defensive line really snipped out the fullback, really stopped that dive play, but now that opens up the quarterback. The quarterback's able to pull it and then take his follow around and get in space. The run-pass option just so critical for these teams in order to have the success, that misdirection now. Snap, fakes the handoff. Myers going back to pass. He is sacked deep in the backfield. Number 97, just a penetrating play by Josh Salisbury on that play. And Josh Salisbury actually had the only sack for Allegheny last week. Um, he's one of those main key players on the defensive line, really big and strong, can really make that push needed to stop this Geneva offense. Geneva now, not where you want to be, behind the sticks here. It is second and long, second and 17 on their own 34. And it, Myers now looking to the sideline, trying to figure out what is the right play for this situation. He's lining up under center, two wide receivers over to the right-hand side, running back and fullback behind him. Quick toss out to the tailback, up the right-hand side, able to break through the defense, number five, Logan Kent, sophomore, 5'9", 170, able to catch that lateral and take it up the sideline. So you're going to see that he starts with this orbit motion going around, and then he gets that nice little flare-out route, get in space, keep moving. Now that we see that they're kind of in a rhythm now, they're kind of, they need to get this third down to really um, make a charge for this touchdown. Critical second down play, they were able to convert. Now they're down to a third and one inside handoff. Big run up the middle, 
number zero, Josh Seister once again, the fullback who was dominant last week at the first half of the game against CMU, showing his power here today too. Now they're starting to spread out the ball a little bit. You see the dive, you see the quarterback, you see the flare outs, you see the deep passes. This is exactly what the Geneva offense wants. Geneva now setting up inside of Allegheny territory. The Gators giving up a big second down play on the second and 17, 16 yards on that play, able to set things up. Now Geneva looking to make a drive inside Allegheny territory as they're at the 45-yard line, first and 10. Myers takes it, quick pitch out to Seister. Seister over the left-hand side, looking for the edge, gets it up the sideline, another big first down run. So now you see some guys are kind of getting out of position. They're not staying disciplined, which is what is really important. As soon as two people go towards the quarterback, that leaves an option round, option pass back um, for the running back to take it um, past the sticks. Geneva driving. Looking back to the sideline, wanting to know what the play is. A little bit of an audible being called at this point. Everybody's in tight. Two wide receivers over to the left-hand side. Man in motion. He decides, great play. Fakes the inside handoff, decides to keep it for himself for a couple of moments, and then the pitch out to the running back, Logan Kent on the play, big game. The quarterback play is so important for the triple option, and just having the timing down. Knowing when, one's too long, one's too early to pitch the ball. Um, so you see uh, Myers really does a good job of waiting until the very, very last second to pitch that ball out and give um, Logan Kent enough time to run. Interesting, last series it was a big play to Hilton McLean to really open things up, and now they're just doing it practically all on the ground this time around. Once again, inside handoff, this time Seister going absolutely nowhere. Allegheny really bottling that up. D-line's getting a little bit of pressure. However, they're not staying consistent. We're looking at second and 10 now. Uh, sorry, second and eight, the ball is on the 10. Second and eight, ball on the 10. Geneva scoring first. Allegheny turning around and answering. We're all tied up at seven now, 2.55 to go in the first quarter, running clock. And the snap pitch out to Seister. Seister looking to get the edge. Great stiff arm. Can he get there? Nice yardage, great pickup. Just running tough, just showing and punishing defenders as he moves along. Really trying to bounce it out um, because he's really primarily working between the tackles here. And now they give him a pitch out to kind of let him work, let him move. It seems as though they're doing a great blend of that, of not being too dedicated to the middle and then not running everything on the edge and keeping the defense guessing the whole exactly. time. Exactly. We have a great variety of play calls going on with the Geneva offense. Uh, Darren Myers under center. It is a third down play and a flag on the play. The referee, Andre King. Making the call. False start on the offense. And now they're backing up. This is a really tough spot. To be so close, you're in the red zone. It was a third and manageable. And now you're back to what looks to be a third and 10. Your thoughts about where we are at this point? Just making it super, super difficult, especially when the playbook kind of gets a little thin these far out, um, especially on third down. You really need to get to the sticks. So kind of running the ball up the middle isn't really an option here. Darren Myers under center makes a snap immediately fades back the pass great pass pattern out to number five my goodness Logan Kent in for the touchdown what a great play so not only was that a great catch but you see the pick play Hilton McLean really uh, really sets the pick on the defender and then allows Logan Kent to spring forward as you can see right here Hilton McLean working on his defender, pushing everyone in towards the inside, and then leaves Logan Kent wide open for the touchdown. And when you're a, a player like McLean, you don't have to do all that much except for run the route because you're going to get the attention and players are going to over-pursue to him and then leave somebody else open. Exactly, and that's the whole play design. You really want to get that um, pick play in so that you can see other people get involved. Geneva with the extra point. It's up and it's good. 14-7 Geneva over the Gators. And it really looks as though the offense for both of these teams really dictating how this game's going. We're not seeing a whole lot of defense. So now you'll see farther on in the game, turnovers are going to be so, so important. We're going to see that first turnover on the defensive side, and that's going to really dictate who wins this game. We want to thank the people who are making this possible here for D3 College Football here on KDKA, Washington Health System, Voodoo Brewing Company, Two Men and a Truck, 
GBU Life and Leeway Enterprises for making this all happen. Thank you so much for being a part of the broadcast and bringing some of the best in D3 football to the people of the region as we cover the President's Athletic Conference all season long. This was so important for Geneva to get two quick scores considering last week they were shut out by CMU to be able to show themselves really that they can do this. And this really helps their offense. You see the triple option. It's so important to get that early lead because then you can start going to the dive, going to the pitch routes, and then go to the pass. You don't have to be one-dimensional and just go to the pass here. Ryan Reitler is the sophomore, 6'1", 160. He is kicking the ball deep. And it is taken at the one yard line, run directly right up the middle. There were no cuts on that. Just take the ball and sprint as far as you can up the sideline. And David Williams on the carry. Is that how you're coached to do this in school? Exactly. That's what you would just want to get the, get the yards that they give you. Yeah, you don't have to start bouncing around, trying to take some losses. You want to get your offense the best possible starting spot. And that's what you want to do is just get upfield and get as many yards as you can. And now here we go. First and 10 from the 25 yard line. Referees having a bit of a conversation before we're able to get this thing started. The Gators are looking to answer, and this is a really important drive that they are able to answer Geneva because it looks as though Geneva is doing what they want to at will. Johnson back to pass. Declan over the middle, great reception. It seems as though when it comes to Declan, he, the, the defender may be two, three yards off of him all the time. He's really trying to not give him so much space and just play a little more aggressive, but that's what opens up those slant routes over the middle. Just take one, two step, three step, playing off your inside foot, and then go and get your yards you need. Declan O'Brien last week becoming the eighth leading uh, receiver in Allegheny history, and it looks as though so far today already making it to number seven. The snap. Take the inside handoff, another slant pattern. This one to number 82, Ian Durchy on the reception. These slants open consistently in the last two drives. It's like we're seeing the same play just on both sides of the field. And if the defense is giving it to you, just keep on taking it, yeah, Exactly, right? exactly. And then it switches up which playmark you go to. Ian Dursey, Declan O'Brien, it doesn't matter. The defense is giving you those slant routes. Just keep going to it. And now you can throw in some RPO action. You can start going to the run game a little bit more now. Johnson in the shotgun, four wide receivers inside handoff to Warship, and he is cutting back inside, able to pick up a couple of yards. Geneva, though, swarming to the ball. But now you see that they're kind of keying on those slant patterns a little bit more. All right, but now I see that this run game is starting to open up. It doesn't open up completely on the first play, but just keep going back to it, and then next thing you know, there will be some plays over the top that you can go to. Second and seven. Less than 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Johnson, pistol position. Takes a snap. Doesn't even look the hand off. Immediately looking downfield. Scrambling to his left. Looks as though he's going to run. He is up the left-hand sideline, and he gets really close to first down yardage. Great scramble and able to pick up positive yards. But see, his eyes were consistently downfield. Not only was he just tucking the ball and run, he first was checking downfield. He saw that they were pulling a lot of DBs back, um, really stopping the pass. But now he kind of uses his legs a little bit, almost get to the first down, give his chance um, on third down now. All right, end of one. It is Geneva leading Allegheny, 14 to seven. We'll come back with the second quarter next. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission, providing great patient care, delivering babies, healing hearts, detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. 
Here at Loway, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at Loway is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. Welcome back to Frank Bean Fur Field in Meadville. The Gators of Allegheny playing host to the Gordon, Golden Tornadoes of Geneva. And the score, 14 to seven, Geneva over Allegheny. Maybe a little bit of a surprise for both of these teams that Allegheny's trailing to start the second quarter and that Geneva feeling like, oh my goodness, we really got this offense together this week. Geneva's really doing a good job with this offense. Uh, they're not going away from what they're good at. Um, they're staying with their main staples of the dive and the pitch, um, but they've been really a lot different with the throws down the field. We, they see that there's um, space there, so they're going at it. Allegheny now third and one, and they're trying to get Geneva to jump. And if you can get them to, to get the easy first down, you take it, right? Sometimes it's not always about making them jump, but maybe changing the play. Okay. Snap high over his head. Johnson has to fall back and just land on it. And how disappointing that is to go from a third and one manageable convertible down and now you're back to a fourth and 12 you're outside of field goal range and you're set to punt that's just it's just drive killers penalties and also um bad snaps over the head because there's nothing they can do about it. low snaps they can kind of get to it the quarterback can kind of get to it um, and make them play but high snaps is kind of so difficult to really turn around and get a play going um but that's a drive killer you were talking earlier about what the difference makers could be, and maybe it's about turnovers. Uh, and just having a play like that, it isn't quite a turnover, but it's the closest thing you're going to get to it Well, then actually having one. Uh, great punt. Geneva now looking at a first and 10 from their own 10-yard line. Does this change the way that you look at this at this point with this possession since you're deep in your own territory? Or do you just keep on running what you've been doing so far if you're Geneva? If you're Geneva, you're loving the spot you're in, um, especially with um, the scoreboard. Um, but now they don't mind being far back um, field position wise because they know that they can stick with the run. And then this gives us more time um, for time of possession and really eating the clock up um, and just, just sustain a large drive. Um, this is what they want to be at. 14 15 to go in the half geneva with the ball under center meyer quick pitch over to seister jumps over a guy tackled at the 15 and a flag in on the play and we're waiting for a call will it stand and it looks as though the way the uh side judges pointed that it may be against allegheny if this isn't against Allegheny. No, it is not. It's a holding penalty against Geneva. Okay. The way he moved his hand to the side, I thought maybe, but ended up being a holding play. Did you see the hold? Uh, so the hold was definitely um, on Geneva. Um, yes. However, we need to see this Geneva offense really take a shot downfield. Um, they can't really um, do their normal type of um, offense here. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really getting them out of their comfort zone here. And so now they really need to convert this first down. And it was a spot foul. That's why they're back to the uh, eight-yard line. It is first and 13 for Geneva. Johnson under center. Running back in the backfield. Takes a snap. Back to pass. Looking for McLean. Does he find him down the left-hand side? And no, not able to make that connection. Double coverage on that play. They kind of had to force that ball there to help McLean. Just let him make a play. Get this offense started again. Um, knowing with this triple option, you don't have many receivers spread out. Mm -hmm. So there's only one or two options for each pass play. So you see Hill McLean was kind of that number one only option there. And so they decided to make a chance and, and hope for something. Does a pass play on a first and long like that deep in your territory kind of open things up a little bit to get the running game going a little bit it more, keeping them honest? It opens things up for sure. However, it also kind of takes away from the running game because now they have to go back to that on second and long. Triple option keeps it himself. Myers up the right-hand side. Talk about a powerful run, running convincingly with great confidence, able to get that first down yardage. And that's how you just dictate this drive, and this is how you propel the drive going forward, um, having the quarterback run. 
quarterback run is so important because the dive can only get you so many yards at a time in those pitch routes, um, pitch options. However, the quarterback can really dictate how much yards you consistently get. Darren Myers under center. Wide receivers right and left. Back to pass. Pressure coming at him. He dumps it off to Seister. Great completion. Seister up the sideline. Able to dodge a tackler and then almost jumps over number one, David Babo. And there's a flag on the play all the way back to the 25-yard line. And a great play. It looks as though it's coming back. Exactly. You see Seister kind of getting lost in the shuffle there, getting out in the flat. And then just keep running hard like he's been doing all day. However, this is coming back. Andre King, the referee today, saying it was another holding penalty against Geneva. And now they're going back. So instead of being able to be in Allegheny territory, they're now going back inside their own red zone, setting up for a play second down from their own 17. Second and what looks like 20 now from their own 17-yard line. Under center, Myers takes a snap. Option play to the right. He's going to keep it himself, finds the edge, able to make some really nice yardage once again as he gets to that edge. It's just so unfortunate because you see that the Geneva offense is getting those big plays they need. They just keep coming back. Those penalties are so drive killers. Um, even when they're making good plays, they're coming back and they have to start all over again. Geneva, they started this drive once again, we have to remember, on their own 10-yard line. They're seeing some great movement with the ball, but a couple of self-inflicted um, penalties driving them back. They're now looking at a second and 12. Ball's on the 25-yard line. Officials slowing things up a little bit. 12.32 with the running clock now back in the play. Allegheny in a one-deep defense. Snap. Inside handoff to Seister, and Allegheny wasn't having that. Nope. Second and long. Now turning to third and long. This is just a huge, huge stopping point for the Geneva offense. And now we need Allegheny to continue to get to the quarterback, get to the dive play, really blow up the interior of the offense, which is basically stalls this entire offense if you can get to the middle. The last time they had a, a second and long that they had to convert on, and they did effectively, they ran that run pass option that you were talking about. Can you see that coming up here? I can definitely see that coming up here. Or I can see Hilton McLean at the bottom of your screen um, really taking off and then them taking a shot on a play that they really need some yards here. Myers under center, snap, back to pass. He's looking the opposite way from McLean. Finds Seister out in the flat, and... The defense did not go to McLean as they did in previous plays. They left them out man-on-man -man coverage and went to Seister and got them. Uh, this was a very safe play. Um, they know that they want to control this game. They don't want to cause any turnovers by throwing it deep um, when, in fact, that play is not there. So instead, they go to a safe play with Seister. But they still try and potentially try and get that first down with that little um, flare out. Defense is having a little bit difficult time earlier in the game. Stopping the, the offenses, it seems as though the last two possessions, both defenses kind of getting things together. The more Geneva back is... for the punt. And he gets the kick away. Nice booming kick over to the sideline. Great bounce, though, for Geneva around the 39 of Allegheny and all the way back to the 21 of Allegheny. The Gators trailing the Golden Tornadoes 14 to 7. Back with more in a moment. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready, ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College, are you ready? Tune in this Friday to the Steel City High School Football Showcase presented by UPMC Sports Medicine as the Franklin Regional Panthers take on the Gateway Gators Friday night at 7 on KDKA+. Are you ready? Looking to escape a dead-end job? We can help. Apply at Two Men in a Truck today for a good job that can become a great career. Sure, I'll be there at 5 a.m. I can binge one more episode. 
Let's face it, you don't always set yourself up for success. Five more minutes. Where are my work shoes? But GBU Life makes it easy with life insurance and annuity products to help secure your future so you have the freedom to do more of what you love. Congratulations! Retiring early must be nice. What are you going to do first? I think I'll sleep in. Secure your future today. Visit GBU.org. 14 to 7, the Gordon Tornadoes of Geneva leading the Gators of Allegheny 1048 to go in the second period, uh, second quarter. And um, your assessment as things are playing out so far in this game. So we saw the first couple drives, offenses scoring like crazy. Now we're going to see that these defenses have seen more of these plays. They kind of see the tendencies that's going on with these offenses. So you're going to see these defenses become, tighten up a little bit and start being a little more stingy with the yards that they give up. Jack Johnson in the pistol formation, three wide receivers wide, takes the snap immediately looking for somebody to throw to down the field. He's going deep. Declan O'Brien, can he get him? He is not able to double coverage on that play. You just want to keep looking for that, that splash play. Um, so you're gonna, they're going to see them keep giving it up to uh, Declan O'Brien, really trying to maybe see if he can come down with one. For people who are watching at home, what is the advantage of is there an advantage of running that play even though it isn't successful? Oh, no, for sure. You also see that these corners are going to start playing a little bit farther back. Um, so it starts to open up those underneath routes. And you can see that you're going to give these wideouts a little more space to kind of run those underneath slants that we were talking about earlier. Jack Johnson takes a snap, fakes the inside handoff, slant pattern to number 82, Ian Durchy, and incomplete. Great defensive coverage on that. And that's what I saw earlier. Um, we saw those slant routes really open up. And then they went back to it. However, you see the DB really breaking on the ball, really making it very difficult, um, very, very difficult to um, get to it. Third and long for the Gators, third and 10. Ball's on their own 22-yard line. And you don't want to have a three and out here, looking for something to be able to get this ball moving. And there's a pre-snap timeout. Timeout called by Geneva. They want to look at this. When you're Geneva at this point, you're looking at a third and 10 from the defensive side. What's the thinking on the possibility of a timeout here? So the timeout is really make sure the corners on the same page. The DBs, the secondary are all on the same page. Um, maybe if they want to switch any routes, just making sure that they have eyes on these receivers and don't let them get past them. Geneva recognizing this is a really big stop. If they can stop them here, it looks as though they're going to have pretty decent field position, especially considering the last time they had the ball, they started at their own 10. It looks as though it could be reasonable. They could be beyond their own 20 this time, and it makes things a whole lot easier if you're able to get the stop right here. And Geneva knows that they can move the ball on offense as long as they have good field position, as long as they're not backed up too far in their own territory. So after this third down play, if they can get a stop, they'll really be looking good on offense. One of the plays that's been open consistently for Allegheny has been that slant pattern. Could you see that coming one more time here? I could see it, um, at least um, at least initially. Um, we might see a little double move here with the slant and go, um, trying to see if they can get something deep here. OK. Johnson takes a snap. He's looking over the middle. Completion number 18 on the reception. Great catch by Austin Williams, the tight end, but a couple of yards short. They were hoping he was going to be able to catch it and make a play. They really just wanted to just see if Williams could really break a tackle and just try and fight for that last bit of yardage that he needed. Um, but we see that we have great tackling on the secondary of the Geneva side. And that's something that we have seen through the game so far, the good tackling on both sides of the ball. We've seen that it's been tough for these uh, playmakers to really get out and, um, and break tackles. And the punt. Declan waiting for it, oh, muffed it. My goodness, that could have got real ugly really quick, but a, uh, a muffed punt return, uh, but it was able to be recovered by Geneva, and now they're looking at what really is remarkable field position considering what we just watched. That's something that could have just flipped the game on his entire head because then you give Allegheny's offense perfect field position as well. Instead, now Geneva still has their field position, um, even though it almost um, came in an expensive fumble. And you have to do your best to put that out of your mind now. Exactly. So now you just want to... Um, Put that play aside, have short-term memory, and then go to work on offense. And coming out, Darren Myers under center. Everybody is in tight. Inside handoff up the middle, number 30, running with power. David Reed, the third. 
He's making sure everybody knows who he is. Picked up 11 on that play. And they're really going away from Seister here, and they go with number 30 um, because he's just a different pace. We like to see these fullbacks really dive and get as many yards as possible and run hard, and that's what he did there. Myers down, ready for the snap, and then pops back up again, looking for a play. Man in motion. A dive play once again. My goodness, he is running with authority in order to pick up those yards. And another big gain here. Now we're looking at a second and six on the play. Second and six. You see Reed just not trying to make any moves, just trying to get downhill and get as many yards as possible. And that's what you love to see in a triple option fullback right there. Reed's right behind the uh, quarterback Myers once again, up tight in that traditional fullback position, not set back deep on a tailback. And now Myers is keeping it over the left-hand side. He's looking for the corner. He has it and driven out of bounds, but he, they say he was down in bounds, which is important for Geneva. Great gain on that play. And that's great QB play by Myers right there. Seeing that that dive would not have any yards to it and then pulling it and then making his own, making his own play there. First and 10 now from the 29-yard line. Geneva driving on a running clock, 8.37 to go. They're leading 14 to seven, trying to add to that. And a dive play for Reed the third up the middle and Allegheny able to stop that, no gain. Just because that didn't really get a gain for them, that still was a positive. Why is that? You also see that um, they know that they're not gonna go away from them. And then keeping, keep punishing those inside D linemen that are flaring and pushing through the offensive line, um, but still running hard right at him, and now we're going to see a change of pace with Seister um, checking into the game. Seister now back in, Reed out for a couple of plays. Second and 10 from the 29-yard line of Allegheny. Myers under center, two wide receivers to the right. Option play, he decides to keep it, and Allegheny tackles him for what looks to be a one-yard loss. For anybody, everybody watching, why did he not pitch there? So that pitch was actually almost very dangerous as he was falling forward, as you can see here. He had, was tackled around the legs. If he would have thrown that out, we would have seen maybe a pickoff and then maybe run the other way. So um, it could have been something very dangerous. However, he just held on to it just to eliminate the risk as much as possible. Third and 11 now from the 30. Myers under center. Seister full back behind him. Everybody in tight except for one wide receiver, man in motion. Fakes the dive to Seister. Myers keeps it himself, runs over the middle, and makes it all the way down to inside near the 15-yard line. What a play by Myers. We just, the Allegheny defense just seems to not have an answer for Myers right now. He is constantly getting huge chunk plays, huge chunk yardages, um, just by running around and finding the inside of the field and towards the middle of the field. And they're going up tempo, takes a snap, hands it off to the tight end, coming around the corner, turning it upfield. Another nice gain, that time by number 80, Jared Ozias on the play. And we just see it constantly spread of new players just making plays. We still haven't really seen um, Hilton McLean make a huge play yet, um, other than the first drive. So we really want to see maybe they introduce him back into the offense right now. Second down. Seven to go, ball on the 13-yard line. 6.30 to go on the game, on the, on the half. Hand off the Seister up the middle, and he is uh, able to make it down to close to seven-yard line. What's great about watching him run is that first contact, he doesn't go down. Never, never. And then now you're going to see David Reed come back in, um, just consistently pulverizing in the middle of the field um, and really getting those D linemen on their, on their heels. Myers now looking at a third and one. Deep inside the red zone, they are at the eight yard line of Allegheny. Snap, back the pass, draw, quarterback draw up the middle, gets it inside the five yard line that he fumbled the ball. The referee's coming in from the sideline saying, no, he was down. He was down before the ball came out. That could have been absolutely disastrous. And then especially because Geneva has sustained this such long drive here. We see that QB draw. He starts to fake it, goes inside. Uh, I think that he's was down. very close. I think he's down, but that's, that's a very, very close, close call there. First and goal from the five. Myers under center, man in motion. Die play to Seister up the middle. Gets really close to the goal line, down inside the one. Reed's continuously being fed here. They might go to him right now just to get the quick little score here. Everybody's in tight. Reed's in tight. Quarterback, keeper, 
Does he break the plane? They're waiting for a call from the referees. They're running in from the sideline. It's a call of a touchdown. Myers, quarterback dive, takes the Golden Tornadoes to a 20-7 to lead here in Allegheny. It's only right that Myers finishes that drive off because you've seen him consistently get those chunk plays, constantly moving the sticks, and then you see him finish off the run by just tough, tough run up the middle. They're ready for the extra point now to make it a 14-point game. Snap, down, kick, and the referees say that it is good. 21-7, to the Golden Tornadoes over the Gators of Allegheny. Back with more of the second quarter in a moment. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission, providing great patient care, delivering babies, healing hearts, detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. My name is Loretta, and this is Special Olympics Pennsylvania. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is competition. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is leadership. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is life-changing. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is unified. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is inclusion. Twenty-one to seven, the Golden Tornadoes taking it to the the Gators of Allegheny. Five twenty to go in the second quarter, and right now it seems, except for that one drive where Geneva wasn't able to get a score, for the most part their offense is doing what they want to. Their offense is moving up and down the field, even with penalties kind of stalling those drives. Um, they're still able to get through um, and get as many yards down to the field as possible. Man, the kick, nice deep kick in and out of the end zone. You know what's really impressive to me is coming and watching D3 kickers that are able to launch a football exactly. the way that they can kick. I mean, this is amazing to see them be able to kick the ball that far. Exactly. Touchbacks um, really, really help the defense get settled, um, especially because they know that they don't have to field the return and they don't have to make a tackle um, and possibly give up that big play. First and 10 from the 25. The Gators of Allegheny taking over. Jack Johnson, a quarterback, Three wide receivers to the right, running back over to the right as well. He decides to keep it for himself up the middle. And the tornadoes, the golden tornadoes all over that pickup of about three, maybe four yards on the play. If you're Jack Johnson here, you know you got to get points on this drive. Um, whether that be through the game, ground game or the pass game, you got to get on the end zone in this play, this, um, this drive here. Um, but you can't abandon the run game. You have enough time. You have five minutes. Um, you have your timeouts. Um, you just need to just take your time go through the whole playbook and uh, see what works. Johnson now in the pistol formation. Trey Warship behind him. Everybody's looking to see where Declan O'Brien is. You got to expect that the ball would be coming to him. He's back to pass, throws it out in the slant, finds Declan O'Brien over on the left-hand side, turns the corner up the sideline, breaks it past the 40. Everybody was looking for him. He still got the ball. Exactly, and there he is. Even though without um, having a big game so far, that was a huge first down gain here. You see he's running a dig on the outside, and he really stops and not try to suck, bring himself into the defense. He really um, had great anticipation there. Jack Johnson knew, knows exactly where he's going to be, get the first down. Jack Johnson, first and 10, 41-yard line, pistol formation, three wide receivers wide, one up back, and the tailback behind him. Takes the clap, 
looking for somebody down the field. Is it O'Brien one more time? Declan O'Brien one more time gets it to the 45 yard line. Nice short play, but I'm guessing much like we were talking about earlier, sometimes the short plays can open up the deep plays. Short plays definitely open up the deep plays. And it's more that free access we see. We see Declan O'Brien by himself on the other side, um, one on one. And then Jack Johnson knows that they signal to each other a little out route just to get as many yards as possible. Um, and then we'll see those those free access plays will start turning into deep plays. Second and six for the Gators from their own 45 yard line. 334 to go, running clock, plenty of time though. Pistol formation, takes a snap, inside handoff, the Worship, he gets it out close to midfield. They're going to spot him at the 49, puts them in very manageable third and two. This is very manageable because you can either stick with the run game, which is still producing yards, um, or you can go those short routes with Declan O'Brien on the outside, or you can take a deep shot here. Um, you have a tons of options, and that's what you want to see um, in a very crucial moment of the game right here. And right now, how big of a stop is this for Geneva if they can force it? If they can force this, um, this will give you great confidence going in, and even have another drive even before halftime. Allegheny, third and three. Very, very important play. Everybody's up for this. Everybody's looking to see where Worship is, where Declan O'Brien is. Takes a snap, phase back, slant over to the right-hand side, number 23 with the reception, Kyrie Miller. However, they're calling it no incomplete pass. You're now looking at third and three, fourth and three at this point. Is there any temptation in your mind to go for it? Uh, we see the offense staying on the field here, um, so maybe that's what they're thinking right now. Are they at a point in your mind where they need to do this, considering it's 2.38 to go in the first half? They're down by two scores. Is this what this saying to you? Even though Geneva is having their way on offense, they don't like to score quick. Um, so I don't really love this play. However, if you really want to make a statement and be aggressive here, I'm all for it. You gotta wonder, do they feel as though they can stop them so they feel like they have to do this? Uh, it's gonna be a very interesting call. They're gonna call timeout and talk about it a little bit. Timeout Gators as uh, Braden Lair in his first season as head coach. It isn't as though this is his first time around. It is his first job as a head coach, but he's been here with Allegheny before as an offensive coordinator. You gotta wonder what's going through his mind right now. Exactly. We're having uh, an interview with him coming up, um, but just because um, he's been here before um, doesn't mean that he can be too aggressive. Uh, I know his play style is probably um, that he wants his first down, especially because the way the defense is struggling a little bit. However, you don't want to put your defense in a tough spot um, by letting this Geneva offense take over halfway um, down the field, and then they could possibly score um, with this time limit as well. And Gino DeMarco, uh, Braden Layer is in his first year. Gino DeMarco is in his 31st year. And he has a statement here with this with this play as well. Exactly. So Geneva, Geneva's defense has been struggling a little bit stopping the run here. Um, so we'll see if they can make a, the D-line can get penetration and get to Jack Johnson. Fourth and three from their own 48-yard line. One more player coming in the formation. Referees are saying, yes, everything's fine. They can go ahead and go. Pistol, snap, Johnson back. Quick slant pattern, almost intercepted by number two, Preston Sellers. I'm sorry, the number two, uh, Luke Krumbacher. Luke Krumbacher on the play. Just, you know what? I still got that wrong. It's Kiefer Mandagello. That's who made the play. I mixed up my number twos. But a great defensive performance to be able to be up there to make a play better than I made the call. Allegheny, I don't hate that play call. They go to their bread and butter with the slants there. Um, and just trying to just thread the needle there. But, however, um, Geneva's cornerbacks have seen this countless times already. Yes. And they knew that it was coming. And they made a great play. 2.35 to go in the first half. Geneva now on the plus side of the 50. They're at the... Allegheny 48, looking to drive. Can they score again before halftime? Man in motion, play action bass, down the right side, looking for McLean, but not able to make the connection with him, overthrown by about five yards or so. This was such a missed opportunity because you see Jared Ozias really streaking down the field with nobody around him. I know that Myers loves the connection with McLean. However, you see number 80, Jared Ozias, streaking down the field wide open, Allegheny just didn't account for him. Here we go. 
second and 10. Geneva looking to make a statement with this drive to go into half, maybe up 28 to seven if they can convert. Second and 10 from the 48. Toss out to Seister. He finds the edge. He gets it up the sideline over to the 35 yard line, able to pick up big yardage. And what's really important, stopping the clock. Exactly, got out of bounds. Knew exactly that they need the most plays possible on this drive um, just so they can keep the run game going. And so he just scrambles out of bounds and gives a chance um, for more time on the clock. First and 10 from the 33. And they keep on running that RPO and the idea of what do, you, do you crash down or do you spread out? And it seems as though at this point, Myers is reading it perfectly as he's making those decisions during the play. Myers back to pass, looking for somebody scrambling, and he takes a huge sack on the play, couldn't find anybody and couldn't get rid of the ball. He's all the way back beyond the 45, near the 47 or 44 yard line, they're calling it with forward progress. And then we see Josh Salisbury just continuously relentless pursuits of the quarterback and then gets to Myers right there. Now you see that Geneva's out of their rhythm. They got a second and long. They can't go back to those dives. They could, um, but they want to set themselves up for a better third down situation here. So they're probably going to go to the air. Under center. Man in motion once again. Toss back. And another big loss. Allegheny just absolutely playing great defense on these last two plays. Uh, number five, Shamar Gwynn, uh, unable to, I'm sorry. <laughs> the play was a busted play on a toss back, and then Allegheny able to force them now into what is a third, and they're gonna call it 30 at this point. And if you're Geneva, you're content with just letting the clock run out. Do you have any temptation whatsoever? It doesn't seem as though Allegheny does to try to stop the clock to get the ball back. No, you have the momentum going into halftime. I know this is kind of taking away a little bit of the momentum. So just get a play that you know works. Um, get some yardage. Um, don't try to do too much on this play. All right, third and 30. And there's a timeout on the field. Geneva looking to decide what they want to do with this play. And Declan O'Brien, we're going to be able to talk to him, uh, interview with him coming up at halftime. And the head coach uh, of Allegheny, uh, Braden Layer, as well. Uh, two really impressive people to see what Braden has been able to do coming in on the first year. Big victory last week, overtime victory. And then Declan O'Brien coming from a career at high school at, at Norwin, coming up here and making a statement with his career here, too. Exactly. You see that start of the season, that overtime win against Waynesburg last week. Um, it really gets the, your program excited. It really gets a new coach um, really eased into it by having an exciting first week um, and then showing a lot, of, a lot of promise on the offensive side of the ball. At this point, the timeout going into this play, I'm thinking a simple run play in order to, to run out the clock and just get to halftime is what you would call. Exactly. So they might just go to a normal dive or maybe see if Myers can pull it and try and get as many yards as possible. Or we might see one of those swing passes um, to one of the orbiting um, wingbacks. 33 seconds to go. Run pass option. Pitch out to the trailing back over the right hand side. Makes some great yardage, but still a long way to go for conversion on fourth down inside the 40 on the play. So now you're looking at a fourth and what looks to be about uh, 17, fourth and 17 on the play now. And at, from 40, with the ball on the 40, you're looking at what would be a 57 yard field goal. Even though these kids have great legs, 57 seems to be a little bit far. It's a little bit out of reach for sure. But the most important part there was that Logan Kent um, really getting out of bounds to uh, finish off half. And that's it. All right, halftime score, 21 to seven. The Golden Tornadoes of Geneva leading the Gators of Allegheny. We'll come back with halftime in a moment. Oh, there's no time on the clock. I apologize for that. There's no time on the clock. No time on the clock, but... The clock is saying we're at zeros. However, it looks as though with just a fraction of the time left, Geneva called a timeout. And it's interesting. What is the thinking here? 
Maybe, Alex, maybe. It, it fourth and it's fourth and what looks to be 16 yards to go from the from the 40. Is it just run the Hail Mary at this point? It's just Hail Mary. This is a very reachable end zone here with 40 yards. Uh, Myers can get um, give a chance to Hilton McLean. Maybe that's what they want to see. They want to see Hilton McLean make a big grab before halftime and really put that exclamation point on this first half. 3.2 seconds they put back on the clock. Two wide receivers. Myers is under center. And he's back to pass. He's going deep. Decides to keep it himself, doesn't see anybody deep, runs it up to the 34, and now we are officially at halftime. 21-7, to the Golden Tornadoes leading the Gators of Allegheny. We'll come back with the halftime show next on KDK Plus. You want top quality roofing? Replacing a roof isn't just shingles. It's a complete engineered system. Being Pittsburgh's number one platinum preferred roofing replacement company, we offer free estimates from one of the most trusted and well-trained teams in the industry. With over 40 years in the business, JP Roofing is efficient and complete most roofing jobs in just one day. If you're looking to get your roof replaced, hire JP Roofing and Siding. Quality long remembered at a fair price. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. Trout Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services including camera inspection and dye testing. Trout Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. I started working out with my dad when I was 12 years old. He said, well, everybody else is sleeping, you up working. It's going to pay off for you. <laughs> Biggest decisions I ever had to make my junior year. I had my daughter at the time, so, you know, I'm like, I got to provide. You know, I had an opportunity to leave early. I had to make a decision. Was I going to leave or was I going to come back to college for an extra year? I'm talking about the crowd, talking about this shit. Um, once I made that decision to come back, my mindset wasn't just to be good, it was to be great. Allison and Michael have been in their home for 10 years, and their bathroom really needed an update. I like doing home projects. Would have definitely taken me longer than we have. They needed a more convenient option, so they called West Shore. The design consultant made it really easy. I left for work with the kids, and they showed up. Morning. Have a nice day at school. By dinner time, we had our bathroom. From Frank Burr Field in Meadville, the Golden Tornadoes are leading the Gators of Allegheny 21 to seven at the half. Earlier this week, Alan, uh, Austin Bechtold, our normal play-by-play -play person I'm filling in for today, had an opportunity to sit down with uh, our own uh, Declan O'Brien for an interview, and we now go to that interview. Hi everyone, you're watching a presentation of PAC Football. I'm Austin Bechtel, joined alongside Allegheny wide receiver Declan O'Brien. Declan, it's great to be with you here today. Overall, how did you get started in football? What has been your journey like? And to get to Allegheny as well, how did you fall in love with the game? Um, I mean, football has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Uh, my dad definitely got me into it growing up as uh, he played as well and uh, I've been playing ever since I think I've been five years old and just ever since then it's probably been the sport I've been the best at so it's the one I've worked the hardest at and I've it's been a constant in my life that I can keep working hard at so I've been playing as long as I can. 
compared to when you started out at five to where you are now in college, how different is your relationship with football? Um, I'd say it's pretty different. Uh, back then, you know, I, I maybe played because my friends played, and that's why, you know, I had the game. But now I have the game, and I have friends here at college because I play the game. How important is your dad to your football journey? Uh, very important. He's a, a huge inspiration to me. You know, he obviously had a great career, and uh, they had a great team here at Allegheny, so I always strive. You know, I want to be as good as him. I want to be better than him. I want to have a team that's as good as him. Did you play any other sports growing up that have helped you in football and overall being able to take some things from other sports that you can work into the game? Yeah, um, I played uh, baseball and basketball growing up. I'd say basketball has a lot of the same uh, movements that you use as a wide receiver, especially for releases and that type of thing. And uh, baseball definitely is a very mental game. And I learned a lot from playing that because I used to get, you know, really upset at like a strikeout or something. But if you let if you let yourself get upset uh, in football, you just go and make a mistake on the next play. So you can't let that happen. And probably a lot of hand eye coordination in baseball to wide receiver too. Yeah, that as well. So overall, what would you say is one of the main reasons why you joined Allegheny? Uh, Allegheny, I, when I was getting here, I, I really liked the coaches who recruited me. Um, I really liked the school. I felt like it was somewhere I could um, be set up for success in the future. Um, I like the campus. I like the people that I met, the players I talked to. And, uh, you know, my dad going here was also an influence on that. I'm talking to Declan O'Brien of Allegheny Football. What is one of the main things that you love during your time of Allegheny in terms of the culture? And you mentioned it a little bit earlier about the campus and just how much that you love this experience. Yeah, um, there's definitely, there's a lot of events. There's always something to do on campus, you know, and um, I've made some of my best friends here and even people that you don't know, um, you can basically be friendly with anyone, talk to anyone that you see on campus. And uh, there's always, a way to have a good time on a day-to-day -day basis. What's one of your favorite memories in the Allegheny uniform? Um, I would say our first uh, team win. It was uh, my sophomore year. We didn't have a season my freshman year, and then uh, we played Teal at home, and it was probably one of the most fun things that I've been a part of. Yeah, and joining the PAC as well now for a second full year, what is it like going from that transition to not being in the PAC to now back in the PAC? for Allegheny and overall for you facing different competition? Yeah, um, I'd say a big difference between the pack and uh, the NCAC is the, really the physicality and the defense. Uh, the pack's a lot more physical. Um, and I think for me, my sophomore year playing in the NCAC, I wasn't as strong or fast as I was last year and this year. So being able to have that experience before going up against the, the really tough defenses, I think helped me in and now. So you're a former Whippeal guy, graduate of Norwin. What's it like for you to be able to represent the whole area of southwestern Pennsylvania? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's some of the best football that you'll find. There's a, there's a ton of great players, you know, countless people going on to play college football. And um, I want to re represent that in a good light and show people that uh, it's a great place to play. What would you graduate from Allegheny? What do you want to do after football? Um, I'm an economics major. Um, I don't know exactly what I want to do. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, grad school or you know, playing a fifth year, something like that. But uh, I'm just hoping to take a few more classes this year and uh, hopefully figure it out exactly. What drew you to economics? Um, I feel like I've always been sort of a business-minded person um, in terms of like making money and that type of thing. Um, but I've also liked mathematics. Uh, but I didn't like math enough to major in it, so I feel like economics was the uh, best of both worlds. To be able to represent the Gators at PAC Media Day, what does that mean for you? Um, it means a lot, honestly. I, I feel like it's, uh, it means that my coaches and you know the staff, my teammates, they, they trust me to show the school in a good light and uh, show what Allegheny is all about. What type of legacy do you want to leave on this football program once you depart? You know, I, I came in, my freshman year, I probably well, I wasn't the most talented. I was I was pretty small, and you know I think we get a lot of guys like that who just end up quitting. But uh, I'd want them to know that if you just work hard enough and 
keep trying at it that you can get better. Finally, to those that supported you throughout all the years and to your family and friends, what would you like to say as a message to them? Um, yeah, just thank you guys so much. I wouldn't, I could not possibly be here without your guys' support and help me out, you know, especially to my family, coming out, supporting me in games, driving me to places, all that. I just couldn't do it without you. Declan, really appreciate your time, man. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Declan O'Brien representing Allegheny Football. Austin Bechtold and uh, O'Brien, De Declan O'Brien on the conversation just there. Coming up, our D3 college football schedule on KDKA Plus. Uh, right now, we are looking at a couple of games this week that we're really looking forward to. Uh, CMU versus Allegheny, that's coming up in week four. CMU ranked number 16 in the country last week with a shutout victory against Geneva. They actually fell back a slot in the national rankings to number 17. I mean, what do you have to do to climb spots in Division Three football? I have no idea. CMU may be shaking their heads at that one as well. We're looking forward to that game. Allegheny at Washington Jefferson coming up in week five at Washington Jefferson. That'll be an afternoon game, another great matchup. It'll be interesting to be able to see uh, how those are going to go. Uh, week seven, we got a bye. Case Western Reserve is coming into Washington and Jefferson. Looking forward to that one too when we wrap up the season in week 10 in November on Veterans Day, Waynesburg and Washington and Jefferson at one o'clock. We are at halftime in Meadville, Allegheny trailing Geneva 21 to seven. We'll come back in a moment and we'll have a conversation with the coach of the Allegheny Gators, Braden Layer, next on KDK Plus. We've continued Continually invested in the best resources and advanced dental technology to ensure gentle and more efficient treatment for all of our patients. It's very gratifying for me to live in the community where we practice. At our practice, we specialize in sedation dentistry, dental implants, and general dentistry. We take excellent care of our patients so that they're comfortable each time they come visit us. Families have been coming to DeBartolo Dental through the years. Our patients' kids and grandkids are now also our patients. but it was good competition. It shows you what we need to work on. You can't give up, okay? And you never have. You've never made excuses. So we just get back in, we get in the trenches, we play two games tomorrow, and then we see what we end up with. Got it? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, two. Maya, can you come in here, please? Already. Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Action. Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't go tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. Tune in this Friday to the Steel City High School Football Showcase presented by UPMC Sports Medicine as the Franklin Regional Panthers take on the Gateway Gators Friday night at 7 on KDKA+. Are you ready? Your first alert weather. A marginal threat for some strong to severe thunderstorms popping tomorrow. Wherever, whenever. CBS News Pittsburgh. We're going to see some rain, some thunderstorms developing for parts of this weekend. On the free CBS News app and Pluto TV. What happens when you put students first? At Pittsburgh Public Schools, you get exceptional learning experiences. In 54 schools, including one online academy, in 85 early childhood classrooms, 20 magnet schools, and 16 career and technical education programs. More options, more opportunities, more ways we put every one of our 20,000 students first. Always, in all ways. Time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and event space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. 21 to 7, that is the score here in Meadville. The Gators trailing the Golden Tornadoes of Geneva. 
earlier this week, had an opportunity to sit down with the head coach of the Gators, Braden Layer. Here is that interview. We're going to try to be a team that strings four really tough competitive quarters together. Uh, we're going to take it one play at a time and, and then build on that previous play and then that previous series and the previous quarter. So we're probably not good enough right now to look past that whatsoever. We're going to take it in that small increments and just try to win that four to six seconds that's right in front of our face. Um, we've got guys that I think responded really well during camp. Um, they're not afraid of the challenge. They understand that it is an uphill battle, but it's one that they're willing to take head on. So I think for people that come to, to watch the Gators play this fall, they're going to see a physical brand of football and, and guys that are ready for a four-quarter battle. When I was here in 2017, I actually came after Coach Hammer's first year. So I'm now getting a taste of a little bit what that first year was like, right? And ultimately, it's finding and developing your nucleus. The guys, especially in the upper class that are bought in, that are all about Allegheny football and are really, really willing to run through that brick wall to be successful, right? And, and go to any measure necessary. So I think that's been the coolest part, being a part of the initial step of the journey. By the time I came here, you know, Alex Victor was already, you know, kind of discovered as a really good football player. Ben Baychick was, right? Logan Lee was, and all those offensive guys. So I think what I'm enjoying is that I get to find the nucleus. Uh, but we also did recruit a really talented freshman class. And we've got some guys that I know are going to help win a lot of football games here at Allegheny in the next four years. So continuing to, to kind of walk that tightrope of really playing to the strengths of our upperclassmen and bringing our young guys along that are going to help us win a lot of games in the years to come. First and foremost, back in 2017 and 18, we leaned into where we are geographically, right? And, and kind of the backbone of what I think makes college football in Western Pennsylvania special, right? And that's a bunch of tough, hard-nosed kids that are really willing to roll up their sleeves and get to work. Um, you kind of have that lunch pail mentality, right, of, of doing whatever it takes. So um, I feel very fortunate that I was here at that time because I got to see that it can be done, right? It's not an impossible task. It's one that I believe in wholeheartedly. And yes, it'll take time for us to reestablish Allegheny as a national power. But again, going back to building one block at a time, focusing on what's right in front of our face, um, we want to make sure that we show everybody in this conference that we can compete for four quarters. I think Allegheny offers the best of both worlds in this region, right? For anybody that really wants a great blend of athletics and academics, it's hard to top what we have to offer um, academically speaking, right? When you look at national liberal arts colleges, um, we are second to none in our conference, right? So if you want to make sure that you are setting yourself apart when it's time to graduate and get that great first job, or even beforehand, get top-notch internships to build your resume, um, that's what we provide. And I think we do it at a higher clip and a better um, level than a lot of our, our competitors. Um, and then you couple that, obviously, with the challenge of building a college football program the right way. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be really rewarding. Um, and then to your point, I, I think the college has done a fantastic job adding new majors, adding new focuses, right? Adding stuff that traditional liberal arts colleges may still be a year or two behind. Um, we're at the forefront of that, right? So you've got a lot of different programs that you can choose from that are unique to the college as well. I, I think I've been taught by some really good mentors throughout my time in the profession to never be bold enough to make a record prediction. Um, again, I want to leave the field every single Saturday and have the opposition come up and say, man, whatever happened, we made them earn it. Right. Um, I, I don't want to walk off the field and have anybody think it was easy, have our players feel like they did not leave their tank on empty. Right. No matter what happens at the end of the day, as long as we can look back and feel like we put our best effort on the field and coaches, teams, fans, they respect what we had to do for 60 minutes. I think that's a successful season for us. If I'm a senior in high school right now, I, I think we are absolutely worth your time. Um, I, I think reach out to us as a staff, reach out to me as a head coach. We are going to bend over backwards, making sure that Allegheny becomes a focal point for people in Northeast Ohio, Western New York, and especially Western Pennsylvania, right? The Pittsburgh area on up through Erie has to be our backbone. And man, I think if you devote a couple hours of your time to coming up and seeing us, taking a visit, finding out what we're all about, I can promise you won't leave disappointed. So come see us. Welcome back. 21 to 70 is a score. The Golden Tornadoes are over the Gators. I'm Robert Mangino. And Alex, when we look at the highlights from the first half, uh, really impressive performances when it comes to the offensive side of the ball for both teams in many ways, but especially on the defensive side of the ball uh, for Geneva. What do you see here? So this was the first pass, uh, long deep shots, uh, McLean. Um, however, this was his only catch of the first half. Um, and then we see Seister get into the end zone, um, running tough and to really put the Geneva offense up by a lot of points. And at that point, it was 7-0 uh, Geneva. Allegheny answering back with a great out pattern. We saw Johnson really find his uh, Williams in the end zone on a great little um, Patriot route. And then we see Logan Kent 
making his speed known and getting to the edge as well for another touchdown. And then Geneva scoring once again on a quarterback, Kiever Myers, keeping it and getting the score. And we get to 21 to 7. And uh, the second half kickoff is about to come about, and we will get back to it coming up. Once again, the score 21 to 7, Geneva over Allegheny on KDK Plus. A two men and a truck? We'll treat you and your belongings like we'd treat our own grandmas. Here we go! Welcome. Whether we're moving you across town or even across the country. You want top quality roofing? Replacing a roof isn't just shingles. It's a complete engineered system. Being Pittsburgh's number one platinum preferred roofing replacement company, we offer free estimates from one of the most trusted and well-trained teams in the industry. With over 40 years in the business, JP Roofing is efficient and complete most roofing jobs in just one day. If you're looking to get your roof replaced, hire JP Roofing and Siding. Quality long remembered at a fair price. Good job, excellent job, okay? That was tough competition, but it was good competition. It shows you what we need to work on. You can't give up, okay? And you never have. You've never made excuses. So we just get back in, we get in the trenches, we play two games tomorrow. And then we see what we end up with. Got it? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, two. Trump Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services, including camera inspection and dye testing. Trump Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission, providing great patient care, delivering babies, healing hearts, detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. You can now get more local news on KDKA Plus. More breaking news. Residents are being asked to stay outside of their house. More community stories. More weather. A couple of funnel clouds were spotted. Weekdays at 12:30 on KDKA Plus. 21 to 7, the Golden Tornadoes leading the Gators of Allegheny, and we are set for the second half kickoff. Jaden. Thorpe is back deep to receive along with David Williams for the Allegheny Gators and for the kickoff Ryan Rettler ready to put his foot into it deep kick once again does it get to the end zone it does will he bring it out he decides to do that gets it at the end zone brings it out only to about the 19 yard line A little surprised that he was willing to bring that ball out he brought it out and then that was even a better statement tackle for Geneva um, just to really get this for a second half kick started um, with a big play. Let's go over some of the first half stats uh, from uh, this game where Geneva is winning 21 to seven. And there are some really telling numbers here. Uh, we can see, especially with rush yards, um, Geneva had 174 yards rushing, which is what you expect from a team like, like them with the rushing attack they have, but only 17 rush yards on the behalf of Allegheny. Allegheny now taking it. Johnson takes a snap, hands it off to Worship trying to go over the right-hand side, and Geneva able to sniff that play out. No gain whatsoever. It sets up a second and 10. Now, uh, you were talking about the, the, the way that they were moving the ball, the stats from the first half. What else stood out in your mind? Um, another thing that stood out to me um, was total yards. Um, so not only with the rushing, but also the passing attack. Um, Geneva had 261 61 total yards there, um, and then Allegheny only with 121. Um, most of those coming from the air, however, um, they really need to get back to this run game um, in the second half. Declan O'Brien getting a number of touches. He had six targets, so it's six receptions, but only 58 yards. They're going to need to get him back in this game in a big way as well. Johnson takes a snap, back the pass, looking over the middle, finds an open receiver, catches it. Declan O'Brien gets it up the right-hand side. A flag is on the play. Will the play stay? A second flag now comes in from both deep officials. And it looks as though, according to the players for Geneva, they're pointing against Allegheny. 
We'll see what the call is. Once again, the officials today, Andre King, we're waiting for him to give us a signal. Uh, the officials today, Ryan Murphy's, the umpire linesman is Patrick Orman, line judge Kevin Smith. The back judge is Mark Gardinetti, field judge is Derek Sullivan, and the side judge is Brandon Ballard. And there is a very serious conversation going on regarding this play and you got to wonder what they're talking about here two officials either saw two different penalties or one penalty i believe they saw the same penalty here and we're going to see the call in a second here's andre king personal foul personal foul against allegheny 15 yard penalty now the personal foul call what was the call on that i was it? Uh, they also call a second penalty here. They're gonna re they're gonna have second down. Let's look at this again and see what we have. It looks as was it that high block where he was going I, I, for I the defender's so. head? So, um, and they sent him back, and they also um, signaled the delay of game. Second and eighteen now. Ball all the way back to the Gator 10-yard line. 14 minutes left to go in the third quarter. Just starting the third, 21-7. Geneva over Allegheny. Johnson taking the snap, looking deep. Declan over the middle, just behind him. Incomplete pass, and Geneva really had a lot of players. There were more Geneva players than there were Allegheny players there. And they're going to the guy that they know that can beat them, and that's Declan O'Brien. Um, Johnson keeps trying to find his favorite target in space, which Probably a, not the safest throw there, right there between three defenders. Um, however, they're just trying to get their guy um, his touches, which you saw in the first half with six total catches. Um, and we're going to see a lot more in the second half. And you have to be careful, though. You don't want to force it to Declan. I mean, he's your guy, but you don't want to force it to him. Next thing you know, you're going to have a turnover, right? I want to see them uh, involve Williams a little bit, um, okay. maybe a little seam route towards the middle. Um, he already has a touchdown today, but get him more involved as well and take the pressure off O'Brien. Jack Johnson back the pass, scrambling a little bit to his right. Looks to go deep, can't do it. Great penetration and a converging tackle. Three different Geneva defensemen able to get in there and tackle Johnson, and it's now fourth and 18. And that's also based off great coverage in the secondary. There is nowhere for Johnson to go, and then that pursuit can eventually get to him. Um, and we can see right there that sack um, really puts Allegheny at a disadvantage here and gives Geneva the potential to have great field position. So the, the, the punter is set up in the middle of his own end zone. Great field position potential here for Geneva. The snap and the punt. He's going to take it at the Allegheny 47. Calls for a fair catch. And now Geneva, first and 10 from the Gators 47 yard line. And considering what happened on the last time that there was a punt, maybe the fair catch was maybe the best call. The fair, fair catch is a safe option. You just need to know that you're already starting on your 47-yard line without a return. Right. So now you know that Geneva uh, has the position that they won, and they can stick with that running game and really start um, with a positive note on the second half um, with this first drive. Because if they can go out and score on this first drive, um, we're, we, the Allegheny Gators are going to have a little tough time coming back from that. Darren Myers under center. Two wide receivers out to the right. Run pass option, dive up the middle, and a great run once again by Josh Seister, but Allegheny able to stuff him up. We see Seister had a lot of yards in the first half. Um, they just want to keep beating him, and then they might want to sprinkle in um, David Reed a little bit just mm -hmm. to get that change of pace, and then eventually we'll see McLean start to get open. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a splash play coming from McLean. Interesting. Second and nine now, Geneva on the 46-yard line of Allegheny. They're looking to get the play in from the sideline, communicating with everybody now. And McLean wide to the near side. Man in motion. Hands are off on the dive play to slice her up the middle, picks up another couple of yards. And it looks as though Allegheny really committing to that dive play. It's going to open up the next stage of that run pass option, isn't it? They know that Allegheny just really needs to stop that dive. That's, that dive is what fuels this Geneva offense. If they can stop that dive, then they know that they can stay disciplined and get to the quarterback um, and then potentially force them to throw and make an error throw. Third down now, six to go, ball on the 44. 
Geneva opening possession, their opening possession of the third quarter after stopping Allegheny. Was there oh, a penalty? Sorry. Officials say there was. Illegal procedure against Geneva. We saw a false start on the slot receiver. Just got a little too anxious there. Um, Ball going back five yards now. It is third and 12 from the 49. Not where Geneva wants to be with where their offense is really their power, which is about the run and being able to build off of that. But they have shown so far in this game that if they needed to pick up 10, 12, 14 yards, they've been able to do so. And Myers is the guy to do that. Uh, we're going to see he's probably potentially going to keep that um, if he doesn't like anything downfield. Snap. Back to pass, looking for somebody, going deep. And he was trying to get McLean. McLean looking for a flag. Nobody in striped shirts agreeing with him that a flag was warranted. I think that throw was more to see if they can get that pass interference call. Um, there wasn't really much space with McLean. Um, and then he was just trying to just put his body in, in between him and the defender to see if he can catch a call. Great defensive stand by Allegheny. They desperately needed something like that. And now they're forcing a punt and looking to be able to get this thing back and then mount their own drive here. Snap, punt, gets it off, calling for a fair catch. And Allegheny will take possession from their own, we'll call it the 10-yard line. Once again, the Golden Tornadoes are leading the Gators 21-7. It's Day 3 Football on KDKA+. This Saturday, tune in to KDKA Plus for D3 College Football as the Westminster Titans face the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. Saturday at 1 p.m. Only on KDKA Plus. I call two men in a truck? If you're like Kate, you're moving and you work hard. You've got lots of stuff and no time to move it. You need pros, people who care about it as much as you do. That's why you call two men in a truck. Two men in a truck. Tune in this Friday to the Steel City High School Football Showcase presented by UPMC Sports Medicine as the Franklin Regional Panthers take on the Gateway Gators. Friday night at 7 on KDKA+. Are you ready? 21 to 7 is the score. 11 19 left to go in the third quarter. Uh, Alex, what is a successful drive at this point for the Gators? Is it enough to just flip the field? It's enough to just make sure that they don't give Geneva a better field position um, if they were to punt. To try and get as many yards as you can. Don't force anything. Don't make a turnover. Jack Johnson, shotgun, hands off around the right side looking for the edge and just not able to get it tackled inbounds. Uh, great play by the defense, Ian Durchie taking that sweep play and just not able to get much out of it, three, maybe four yards on the play. I don't mind that play um, by the Gators um, because they know that they're having a tough time getting to the middle of the field in, the, in between the tackles and just trying to see if they can spring one loose on the outside by having a jet sweep by worship. Jack Johnson. Back in the pistol position. Worship behind him. Two to the left, one to the right. Hands off to Worship up the middle. Worship breaking a tackle, diving under a couple of defenders and able to pick up some really good yardage. It's now a third and two from the 18. Now we see the offensive line for Allegheny starting to get a little more confident, knowing that they can get a little bit of push and now seeing that it's starting to spring free with some of these running backs and maybe we'll see a big play coming up. Third and two, inside their own 20. They're taking their time in the huddle, making sure they get this play right. This is a very important third down play. This is very crucial. Um, they, wanna, they do not want to punt here. They desperately need a drive that is going to be sustained and hopefully producing points, considering they've not scored since their first possession of the game. 
and that looks to be a busted play and now Johnson just trying to pretty much go for his life at that point. What do you see happening in this play? Well, like you said, it's a busted play, right? We have the running back or maybe even the quarterback flipping to the wrong side. Um, so that RPO is kind of out the window at that point because you don't see a real fake there. Johnson just has to tuck it, see how many yards he can get, and just make sure he doesn't fumble. And actually loses yard on the play, and now you're in a fourth down situation. Fourth and two. Allegheny back the punt. And Geneva is set for, once again, really good field position as their returner is on their own 45-yard line, gets the punt away, and this time he's going to call for another fair catch. And once again, you're right around that 45-yard line. So it's almost as though the time has gone by, but it's pretty much the same situation all over again from a few minutes ago. We ended up in the same situation here around the 45-yard line. Geneva knows that they need to make this drive last because this is their chance to really take hold of this game, take control, and really um, bring down Allegheny's confidence to come back. We, we talked a lot about the offenses so far, but the defense for Geneva has really stood up after that first drive giving up a touchdown. Uh, Allegheny really hasn't had much of an opportunity to move this ball at all. It's that defensive line. I told um, early on in the game, my keys to the game was control the line of scrimmage, and we're seeing Geneva do that on the defensive side. All right, Darren Myers under center, hands off up the middle, and great power running right there. Able to pick up a few yards, make it uh, five, almost six yards on the play. You gotta love the way that they're running at this point. Just running with authority, David Reed up the middle as he consistently does when he's in the game. David Reed, he doesn't get a lot of touches because Seister is such a great playmaker, um, but he just keeps, David Reed comes in and just gets all the yards they possibly can and runs tough. And then we know that um, now that Seister's checked in the game, there's a potential um, for a big play. Yeah, David Reed kind of hobbling off a little bit, a little hurt. And now a, a fumble on the play. Allegheny gets it, and it looks as though it was that run pass option that just things messed up from the very beginning. Sometimes there's a little lack of a communication between the quarterback and the running back of who's taking it, who's pulling it. Um, so maybe we saw a little, little disruption there. Um, and it causes Myers to lose the ball, and then now Allegheny's got a chance um, with the one of the best field position they've had the second half. Yes, they have. They now have it first and 10 at their own 43-yard line and a clear opportunity here to make a statement back against Geneva. As you said, the best field position of the second half, not able to do much of anything with it. The first two possessions is three's a charm here. We're about to find out. Jack Johnson in the pistol formation fakes the handoff, looking deep for Declan O'Brien. Does he have him? Oh, in and out. I mean, it hit his hands, bounced off of his legs, and then fell to the turf. So this is where we see a little bit of a different play design. We see, we see those slants that they've been going to. However, instead of running the slants, they burst it upfield on a slant and go, try and get Declan O'Brien in space. A um, little bit of an underthrow here, um, but he was trying to fit it through the window because we had a safety over top, and we didn't want to throw it into the, the um, opposing team. Second and 10 now for Allegheny. And at this point, you're looking for a drive. You're looking to be able to put some plays together. You're looking for a first down, aren't you? You're looking for a first down first, so maybe we'll see if we can get a little bit of running attack here with Worship. High snap, hand off to Worship, up the middle, and no gain, maybe one on the play, no more than that. Sets up a very long third and nine on this play. And if you're out of Laganey, you're wondering, what do we got to do to move this ball? They're trying, they're trying the run game. And sometimes a lot of teams like to go away from the run game when it's not working. Allegheny is continuously to go back to it. However, uh, now that we see that the offense line is not getting the push they want, maybe try a uh, little jet sweep or possibly a little screen pass or a little bit of a, a bubble route to the inside slot receiver. Just to move some yards, make it a little bit easier for a first down. Snap. Johnson back to pass, scrambling, taking it himself up the middle, looking for that first down yardage, trying to get it, fighting so hard for it, really close to a first down. However, it looks as though he's going to be a yard short on the play. And now what do you do? We already seen them go for it on, first down, on fourth down, didn't get anything. However, we see Johnson just trying to get most of what a, a busted play looks like. He doesn't see anything downfield. Um, and he's just trying to just make a play and he puts it in his own hands and almost gets that first down yardage And we see the offense back out for fourth down and they are looking to make a statement here. Everybody is in tight Johnson under center worship deep quarterback sneak 
It looks as though they're going to give it to him. Picks up two yards on the play. Great quarterbacks think it's one of those plays to where it's not a guarantee every time, but you need to be able to do that well. When you need that yard, you need that yard and a half, you need the quarterback to be able to get it. And like you said, it's not a guarantee, especially with the pressure that Geneva's defensive line has been getting. And I'm honestly very surprised that we see that QB sneak because of the lack of run game they've had today. However, Johnson's big, tall, powerful quarterback is able to lean forward and get as many yards as he can, and he gets the first down. The Gators, first and 10 in Geneva territory, first time this second half to have them penetrate the 50. And now they're first and 10 at the 46. Snap, hands off to worship up the middle, plowing, just absolutely fighting for yardage. You gotta love it when you're watching a running back and even when they're facing the wrong way, they're still pushing to get more yards. They keep those legs churning, right? And then you see, um, we got big, powerful legs by worship. He's able to just keep the pile moving and he even gets a little support from some of his linemen, pushing him forward. Um, now you see the run game's a little open. You see the defensive line's a little tired. They've seen a long drive, one of the longest drives um, they've seen in a while by the Allegheny offense. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna see um, a little bit of an aggressive play call um, from Allegheny. Second and five, Johnson takes a snap, fakes the handoff. Throws it to Declan, however, it was batted at the line of scrimmage, busted up immediately. Declan O'Brien on a slant, just not able to complete that pass. And that's a smart play by the Geneva defensive line, knowing that you don't always need to go for the sack. Instead, put your hands up. Gabe Trexler does a great job of getting his hands up, batting the ball down, and not giving Declan O'Brien even a chance at the ball. And Gabe Trexler, remarkable on defense. He was the leading tackler from the game last week against CMU, and he was the leading tackler going into the first half of this game and a great spot where you can't get to the ball, get up in the air, and bat that ball down. Johnson moving a man in motion, third and about five. One man deep, doesn't even look to hand it off. Out pattern to Declan O'Brien, catches it and up the sideline. Able to dodge and weave, gets inside the 20 yard line. Great play, great pass, great reception, great run. That's not only a great pass, that is a great route run by O'Brien. Really sticking his foot in the ground, working his way back towards the sideline, opening his hips up, and then able to burst upfield and get a ton of yards after the catch. Big drive, worship up the middle. Able to pick up a few yards. They're going quick here. What's the mindset behind going quick at this point? When you go quick, you be aggressive, and you know that these players are focused. They keep the defense tired, um, and now they know that they got their athletes, they got the speed, and maybe they can run around and get some um, much-needed yards in the red zone. Second and six. Ball is on the 15-yard line. The Gators with their most impressive drive since their very first drive of the game when they were able to score and tie things up at seven. Now inside the red zone, Johnson snaps for the snap, gets it, fakes the handoff to Worship, rolling right, looking for a man. Does he find him? He does, completes the pass down at the five yard line, number 18, Austin Williams with the reception Great play. I really want to see Allegheny continuously going to Williams, especially in the red zone. Uh, you saw in the first touchdown of the game, that's what, um, is he ran that corner route. Now you see he's running that flat route, also giving him space to move. He's a big body, big target, and Johnson likes to find him. We're now in the red zone. We're now first and goal now from the five for Allegheny. Snap. Hand off the worship, looking to find some room, bounces it outside, runs hard into the end zone, touchdown. He was not going to be stopped on that play. And that's why you continuously go back to the run game. You open up with the pass yards, right? You get your guys out in space. And now you see that the rush game has completely opened up with worship making a tough run for the touchdown. Just continuously going through bodies and running hard. And now that you're within a touchdown of this game, it was a little bit different when it was 21-7 and you were struggling back inside your own 20. Now, making it a 21 after this kick, potentially 14 game, now the momentum kind of changes now. You feel like you've got this as a potential. The confidence really changes. And now that you know that you have a chance of winning this game. 21-14 is a score. The Golden Tornado is still on top of the Allegheny Gators. We'll come back with more of the second half on D3 Football on KDK+. Dental implants. 
implants can give you back the confidence and smile you feel has been missing. Implants feel, look, and function like natural teeth. And now you can get 12 months, same as cash. Call D. Bartola Dental for an appointment at 412-221-9440. Here at Loway, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at Loway is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. I'm Andy Sheehan. I'm the lead investigator with KDK Investigates. I live in Pittsburgh. I've raised my kids here. For decades now, I've worked trying to uncover wrongs. We looked at the quality of water here. We found dangerous levels of lead in the water. We dug further. The city's water authority took action. And today, they have replaced more than half of the lead service line throughout the entire city of Pittsburgh. We uncover a problem. We get answers. Positive change for you and your family. This Saturday, tune into KDKA Plus for D3 College Football as the Westminster Titans face the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. Saturday at 1 p.m. Only on KDKA Plus. We are back 21-14. The Golden Tornadoes over the Gators of Allegheny, but a very important score for the Gators, a statement after that turnover. And now Allegheny knows they're not playing catch up anymore. They know that even though they're down on the scoreboard by only a touchdown, this makes a more manageable game and opens up the offensive playbook. And the defense, after that turnover, they have all the confidence in the world they can stop the Geneva offense. How difficult is it to get that turnover out of your mind? It's it very tough. And uh, you know that having a short-term memory is very important um, in football. You just know that this is a brand new drive. This is almost like a brand new game at this point, 21-14. This game's a lot closer than it was um, at halftime. It sure is. 4.22 to go in the third quarter as we are sent to get the kickoff. And this is a very shallow kick. One of the up men gets it at the 25-yard line. Able to run straight up the field. However, there is a flag on the play. The field judge from the near side throwing the flag on a play that happened a good 35 yards away from him. We'll see what the call was. And it's almost always a kick return team penalty. Exactly, probably a block in the back. We'll see what the call is from Andre King, the referee for today as he finishes talking with his fellow officials. Personal foul against the receiving team. Now I have to admit to you, I've been watching football for a long time. I've not seen that call after the personal foul. That what what is he calling? What is the the penalty that he just called on the personal foul? So we have a 15 yard penalty here. Um, I believe they said block in the back. Okay. But now that you really set your offense up in a really strong, uh, bad situation here, because you know that Geneva thrives on good field position um, and running the ball. So now you kind of a little backed up. These, this first down is very important. Very very important. Yeah, they've not seen field position this bad since the first half when they had a drive starting at their own 10 yard line so far it's been right around midfield in fact plus territory up to this point big run by the fullback number 30 once again David Reed on the play coming in on the sideline uh, had a little bit of a tweak earlier he hobbled off the sideline but he, apparently it's all fine now he's back in it's now second and five from the 22. Geneva now looking to make the play Darren Myers looking at his wrist under center, ready to take the snap. Two men in motion, and the play continues, and it was a handoff to the receiver, to one of the uh, wingbacks, number seven. Darren Myers actually keeping it on all of that. The penalty ultimately got called. Two guys moving at the same time before the snap. Just is not something you're able to do. We have both wingbacks, just a little miscommunication there, um, knowing that only one of them can orbit motion at the same time. Um, and now with both of them, we see a penalty. And now we're back to a second and 10 for the Geneva Golden Tornadoes. You know, they have to be wondering 
a little bit in their own mind that they had two drives starting in plus territory, weren't able to do anything, and now they're looking at a second and 10 penalty, turnovers. What's happening inside their heads at this point? Darren Myers under center. Man in motion. Die play. And it was a great stop. Reed going absolutely no place. Great penetration from the defensive line. Geneva, the second half, is really struggling on the offensive end. It's because they can't get that dive working because that defensive line of Allegheny is really flooding through the gaps as linebackers are really playing aggressive, shooting through the middle. And then you also see that the corners are staying home and then taking their option man and making big tackles as well. Third and 11, loss on the play of one. Allegheny reading that play as fast as Geneva was able to run it. Under center, back the pass. Myers looking for somebody as he's rolling right. Intercepted. Great interception. Number nine, Samuel Cato, just absolutely jumping that route and getting that pick. Myers trying to go to a size here in the middle of the field. Wasn't really much there to work with, and then just trying to force a little throw. We see that Myers scrambling, doesn't see his eyes doesn't see number nine coming through. And now we have a huge turnover and continuously talking about splash plays. Allegheny is doing that. They're staying disciplined. They're get, look, change, staying on their man. The Sam Allegheny bench is right in front of us and there couldn't be more energy on the sideline than what's there right now. The energy is so super, super important. And now you're in plus territory, almost in the red zone now. Allegheny's offense is feeling really, really good. First and 10 from Geneva's 22 for Allegheny the best field position they've had to start a drive all game long. Turnovers critical for Geneva in this comeback for Allegheny at this point. Johnson looking over to the flat, finds a receiver, actually dumps it off to his running back, able to pick up a few yards. We'll call it about four, maybe five on the play. You kind of take what you can get at times. Exactly. And Dursey's just wide open. No one's accounting for him. And now that he knows that no one's on him, he's able to get upfield, get as many yards as possible, and now makes an easy second down play. Second, and they're going to call it three, maybe four yards to go here. Two minutes and five seconds left to go in the third quarter. Running clock. Johnson, pistol formation, takes a snap. Hands it off to Worship. Worship up the middle. And not able to pick up very much yardage at all. Maybe one on the play. Geneva able to stuff that. We saw this on the last drive, too. Allegheny just never abandoning the run. And that's what I, I want to keep uh, focusing on because now that we know if they can get this first down, that run game will open right back up. We have a injury timeout here on the field. Trainers coming out to tend to one of the linemen. And uh, we will stay here and uh, keep it right here. 21-14, Geneva is leading against Allegheny, 21-14. to And when we're looking at uh, this uh, Allegheny County, uh, Allegheny Gators uh, schedule coming up, uh, next week they're at St. Vincent. Why do you see that matching up with St. Vincent? Uh, I know that, you know, St. Vincent and Allegheny um, really need statement wins this next week, um, especially if Allegheny is not able to um, beat Geneva here. Um, and then followed up by Bethany. Um, those are winnable games for Allegheny, and especially when they go to Carnegie Mellon, which is one of the toughest um, teams in the, in the PAC. Um, they really need to get some statement wins before that. Yeah, nobody in the pack is looking forward to seeing Carnegie Mellon on their schedule this year, that's for sure. Okay, tended player taken care of. Now quick slant pattern to Declan O'Brien. Looks as though he has first down yardage. Caught it and tackled right there at the 10 yard line. It looks as though they're set up now for just inside the 10. They're going to call it the nine. So first and goal from the nine at this point. And the Gator just feeling really good about themselves. I know that was a great play. Um, O'Brien was able to catch that over the middle. That was a very dangerous throw with a bunch of middle linebackers really flooding towards, towards the ball, trying to get another interception. Johnson's in the pistol. Back to pass, looking for Declan O'Brien. Can he find him in the end zone? Great defensive move by Geneva in order to break up that pass. He was able to get up, get his hands on it, just not able to bring it in. We see number one, Ariel Pierre, just really using his hands, not letting O'Brien get the separation that he needs. 
O'Brien goes straight to the back of the end zone because that's where they teach you on fade balls. As soon as you take your first initial move, you just break straight to the back of the end zone. The quarterback should find you. Unfortunately, um, O'Brien cannot um, bring down the ball on that play. Difficult coverage for a cornerback to defend, isn't it? Very, very tough. Johnson now. Back in the pistol. Second down. Goal to go from the nine. Man in motion. Hand off to worship up the middle. And he's able to dive and get it close to the five-yard line. Pick up about three yards on the play. Geneva then crashing on that play as well and keeping it to only a three-yard gain. After going pass on first down, they go run second, second down. Still just trying to make it an easy third down, um, an easier third down for them. They know they're going to go to the air on this. I don't really see a run play um, in on this play. Allegheny setting up. Johnson overlooking the defense. The defense is set in a single safety deep. Snaps his hands, fakes the handoff, looking downfield. He's feeling pressure on his backside. He's running right, looking for somebody in the end zone. Intercepted by number nine. There's a flag on the play. There's a lot to look at right now. What ultimately are the referees going to call here? They are in a huddle. Let's go back and look at what this play turned out to be. He's scrambling. We're not going to see the. It looks as though he got the one foot in. Here's what the referee's calling. He calls for the interception and holding against the offense. So the penalty is declined. It's first and 10 for Geneva from what looks to be their own one, maybe two yard line. That's a great play from Hines right there. Just continuously following Johnson as he's trying to make a play scramble towards the outside. Johnson with a little bit of an error throw, trying to force something. Um, didn't want to run out of bounds, didn't want to throw an incompletion. Um, tried to be too aggressive on there, and now this might come back to haunt the Allegheny offense. You're done at your own two. You're going to play it safe. Dive play to Seister right up the middle. Allegheny knew that was going to be the call, and he picked up what looks like nothing on the play. I mean, you have to be really careful about this, about what you call moving forward, because you don't want to get too tricky with this. You've already had a turnover, and they're going to have the timeout from the third quarter to the fourth quarter to figure things out, flip the field. We'll come back. 21-14 is the score. Geneva over Allegheny. You're listening or you're watching D3 Football on KDKA+. You can now get more local news on KDKA+. Plus. More breaking news. Residents are being asked to stay outside of their house. More community stories. More weather. A couple of funnel clouds were spotted. Weekdays at 1230 on KDKA+. Plus. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready? Ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there. When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College. Are you ready? Allison and Michael have been in their home for 10 years, and their bathroom really needed an update. I like doing home projects. Would have definitely taken me longer than we have. They needed a more convenient option, so they called West Shore. The design consultant made it really easy. I left for work with the kids and they showed up. Morning. I'm gonna sit at school. By dinner time, we had our bathroom. This Saturday, tune in to KDKA Plus for D3 College Football as the Westminster Titans face the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. Saturday at 1 p.m. Only on KDKA Plus. Twenty-one fourteen at the start of the fourth quarter. Geneva really dominating much of this game except for the first drive for Allegheny to go up and tie things up at seven. And then they went and Geneva was able to extend the lead to 21 to seven. And this second half, it has been all Allegheny. It's been all Allegheny except for that last play. Um, we see Johnson really trying to make a forced throw. Um, and now, you know, Geneva's backed up in their own inside their own two. Um, and now this is the most important drive for Geneva because they do not want to have backed up punter 
um, giving the Allegheny offense even better field position going into after this play. So the, the first step is get it to the five. Get the full distance for your punter. Next is try to get enough yardage in order to set up the potential for a first down play. Darren Myers under center and decides to just take it himself and dive and get some of that yardage, getting it out close to the four, trying to give his punter, if he has to, a little bit more room. Give your punter more breathing room because they need at least 10 yards to 15 yards behind um, the long snapper in order to get the most best uh, punt off as possible without getting the risk of block. Third and eight from their own, we'll call it the five, maybe the four. It's the four. And do you just keep it yourself again and call your own number if you're Darren Myers? We'll find out. Darren Myers, man in motion, takes a snap, pitches it out on the sweep. Can he get the edge? He's trying to really close out to about the 13, maybe the 14-yard line. What a bold play, bold call, great run by Logan Kent. Such a bold play by pitching it back inside the end zone, but letting Logan Kent use his speed. And then he's making that tough run at the end and then hurtling at the end to really get that extra inches he needs for the first down. First and 10 now, ball on the 14-yard line. Geneva getting the room that they need, now able to have a little bit more confidence after getting a first down. And they're able to draw Allegheny off sides. The only thing is, though, they called the play dead, must have been contact at the line of scrimmage. Because normally, if it's a foul against the defense, they'll let the play go, will they not? And Myers really wanted that free play because he knew he had uh, he had number two, um, Luke Krumbacher, really getting straight down the field, wide open. He tried to make a play, but he, they still get the play call, and they still get the penalty, yes. and they're able to move forward. Now it's a first and five. Encroachment called against Allegheny. Geneva now at a point with 13.51 and a running clock at this point, wanting to just be able to control the ball. My guess is slow things down a little bit. And the clock is ultimately your friend. And that seemed like another busted play. Like the, the offense this time wasn't all on the same snap count. At least the tailback wasn't on the snap count with everybody else on the team. Especially when you motion every play, timing is so important. And Myers not being on time with his fullback and the motion man. So now we see another busted play, second down and long. They're really not doing themselves any favors here, even though they've gotten a lot of uh, breaks with the penalties. Second and seven for Geneva. Back in their own territory, deep in their own territory at the 18-yard line, man in motion, handoff up the middle to Seister, and Allegheny really seeming as though they're keying on that run up the middle, making sure that Seister is not going to be the guy to beat him. Exactly. They're not letting Seister beat them, and they're not letting the dive beat them. They're letting Myers, um, who's a relatively new quarterback to the Geneva system, um, really trying to make him beat with his arm and his legs. He's an athletic player, but without the help of Seister, it's a little bit more challenging for him. Myers, the second leading rusher from the first half, trailing uh, Seister just by two rushes. Sweep out to the left-hand side, looking for the edge. Got the edge once again. Number eight, able to catch the corner. Even though Allegheny's doing a great job at being able to stop the run up the middle, they are struggling with the plays around the left-hand side and actually to the side. Landon Smith, a freshman out of Laurel, with the big play. And Landon Smith, only a freshman, making a huge play for Geneva, getting that first down. And now this is where Geneva wants to be, midfield. Um, they have as much clock as they can eat up as possible on a fresh set of downs. And now they can go back to the dive play and then maybe see if Myers can pull one and make a scramble. Yeah, first and 10 now from their own 36 yard line. Man in motion once again, dive up the middle. Nope, he decided to keep it himself. Myers decided to hold on to it, trying to get to the outside on the short side of the field. Unable to do that. Able to set up now a second and 10 Allegheny defense stepping up. Myers pulling it, taking it himself, um, and not even pitching it either. Um, I guess he's not trying to uh, make a an error toss, just trying to keep the ball um, with them, with the Geneva offense. Try and still stay in bounds, take as much clock as possible and use that time of possession to their advantage. Second and 10 from the 36, far side of the field. Everybody's up tight except for two receivers over to the short side. Handoff to Seister 
over the right hand side trying to find some room able to shed a blocker gets to the sideline a nice pickup once again four five maybe six yards on that play and Myers does a good job of opening um, opposite towards Seister. They're finding different ways to get Seister to the ball and not the conventional dive play that they always use. Um, just showing that fake that Myers has gives Seister enough breathing room to spring one for a couple yards. Third and four. Even if they don't convert here, this is a successful drive, isn't it? This is a successful drive, especially starting all the way back in their territory like they did um, earlier on the possession. Now it's time to make a play. Third and four, option, Myers keeping it for himself. Allegheny able to stop that. There were just so many defenders that were able to break through the line of scrimmage that if he would have pitched it, it looked as though it was going to be even a bigger loss if he did that. Then you see Zach Altenbog getting towards the quarterback, doing his job, knowing his assignment, which is the quarterback, and then making a great, great play in open space. And now Allegheny has a chance to uh, respond. Geneva now, fourth and four from their 42, kicking it away. Allegheny now, maybe dealing with a little bit of frustration from that last drive with the interception down at the end zone, but it's one of those ones where you gotta put it out of your mind. Re punt returner decided to go ahead and return that. Flags come flying in, and a couple of yard gain on a punt return is going to go back even further once you look at whatever penalty comes down. At this point, you had a real nice drive for Allegheny. They get all the way down into the red zone. They thought they were going to have a touchdown pass reception. It turns out to be an interception. How difficult is that now to say, okay, we got to put that away. You talk about having that amnesia, but how difficult is it to actually do? It's very, very difficult, especially with Johnson knowing that uh, he likes to play aggressive. He likes to thread the needle a little bit between a couple defenders. And now that knowing that that didn't work out from the last play, that doesn't mean he abandons his play style. He needs to keep attacking, keep throwing, because uh, they're down and they need to they need to make some big plays here. So, and the only way they can do that is through Johnson's help. 9:51 to go in the fourth quarter. The time on the clock is really not an issue at this point. There's plenty of time to be able to do whatever it is that they choose. Trailing by only seven points, Johnson takes a snap, looking downfield, trying to find a receiver finds him number 18 Austin Williams the tight end over the middle they've been calling his number a lot in that same pass pattern quite a few times exactly big body Williams just trying to get through the middle of the field um, it's a great catch however that's a great play um, by Geneva defense uh, number 14 um, so now we we see that Allegheny's got a little bit of momentum um, a little completion to get Johnson with that in, in, in interception out of his mind Three wide receivers to the right. One is coming in motion to the left, crossing the formation. Two and two now. Johnson snaps, hands off, and a nice run up the middle by Trey Worship. Realize you gotta do a little bit of run, gotta do a little bit of pass, keep the defense guessing at all times. And the reason why you're able to do that is because you have enough time on the clock. You have potentially two, maybe even a, a third more drive, as long as Geneva doesn't um, sustain a drive themselves. Knowing that a third and short, you can go either way. You can go pass, um, or you can possibly try to get worship out in space, maybe with a little pitch, um, just trying to get as many yards and get that first down so they don't have to go for it on fourth. It looks like Declan O'Brien is man-to-man -man coverage, single coverage over here. Linebacker kind of cheating. Fakes the handoff inside. Pass over the middle once again, getting his receiver for the first down yardage. They're calling for the first down, moving the sticks. Number 82 on the play, Ian Durchie with the reception. And then you also see Dursey going back to those slant routes. You just have great receivers that know can take one move, and that slant pattern is so dangerous for Allegheny offense, and Geneva defense can't really keep up with it. They're just making great grabs. Allegheny, very important first down conversion they were able to get on that last play. Now first and 10 from the 38. Johnson's in the shotgun, takes the snap, looking downfield, looking for a man and not able to complete it to number 18, Austin Williams, up the, the uh, hash marks, just not able to make the connection. Williams trying to do a little out and up route, but Trexler is all over it, um, doesn't let him spring free or get any sort of separation, and makes a tough throw for Johnson. Second and 10 from their own 38-yard line. And they seem to be going a little quicker, too, at this point. Not a hurry up, but there's a little bit of purpose 
as they come out of the huddle. Three men to the wide side on the left-hand side. Steps back, passes, and just underthrows his receiver, Ian Dursey, once again, number 82. He was open, just not able to make the completion. And Sneed getting through the line and just making it a little bit tougher throw for Johnson. It's usually normal routine pitch and catch for that out route. However, Sneed was doing a great job of getting to the quarterback, putting his hands up, and being a distraction to Johnson. How important is this third down conversion, third and 10 from your own 38-yard line? Not only this is important, um, you just cannot turn over the ball. You have eight minutes left. You can live to fight another day. Just try not to uh, force an error throw here by Johnson's part. Man in motion. Two receivers to the near side. Snaps. Looking back. Throwing it to an out pattern over to the Declan O'Brien. Overthrows him. No flag on the play. Incomplete. Not the turnover you were concerned about, but just another errant throw by Johnson. Just not able to be in sync with his receivers in this drive. O'Brien doesn't have much space to work with here because of great coverage um, by Manzagello. Um, however, a little bit of a high throw. It doesn't really give O'Brien a chance. Um, but like I said, no turnover. Um, so they're going to punt it away and then hopefully get the ball back um, and have another shot at it. And Geneva looking to get some really good field position. Their returner is set up on the 25-yard line. Snap back and the kick gets it away. Not a very deep kick. The return to letting it bounce. And then the roll goes all the way into inside the 20, down around the 18-yard line. The Gators of Allegheny trailing the Golden Tornadoes of Geneva, 21-14. You're watching D3 Football on KDK+. Maya, can you come in here, please? Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't go tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. Two men and a truck will treat you and your belongings like we'd treat our own grandmas. Here we go! Hi, hello there. Welcome. Whether we're moving you across town or even across the country. Tune in this Friday to the Steel City High School Football Showcase presented by UPMC Sports Medicine as the Franklin Regional Panthers take on the Gateway Gators. Friday night at 7 on KDKA+. Are you ready? 21-14, the Gators trailing the Golden Tornadoes. Geneva has the ball. I'm sorry, the Gators have the ball. I come on, I gotta make sure I see this right. Geneva has the ball, first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. Myers decides to keep it himself. That play looked to be as confused as I was before the play happened. We just see more miscommunication with this Geneva offense. And this is one of the most crucial parts of the game because they know they can just sit on this lead, work with their dives, work with their options, um, and then really turn this Allegheny offense off and then have this defense more on their heels. And just to, it's a really, really important for Geneva to sustain a long drive here. Second and eight from their own 20. 7.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Up by a touchdown, looking for that sustained drive. Myers under center, man in motion, hand off to the up back, and Slicer able to pick up one, maybe two yards on that play. And we see Reed coming back in the game for Seister. Um Reed's able to power forward for as many yards as he can get. The Allegheny defensive line is really stepping up here, and we're going to see if they can really get to the quarterback here on this third and long play. Reed stays in. Seister stays on the sideline for this play. 
Myers goes under center, third and six. Ball on the 22-yard line. Man once again in motion, pitch out to the man in motion, looking for the corner. They've been consistently able to get that corner all afternoon long, not that time. Allegheny chasing them to the edge and keeping a gain to just a couple of yards. It's now fourth and six. We saw Kent with that same play um, back in their own territory, back in their own end zone. Um, this time they're not able to convert like they did on the previous. Um, however, you know that Geneva's defense has been playing good all day, and hopefully they can make another stop and then make sure they keep Geneva's offense on the field. Geneva now in punt formation. Under six minutes to go in the game, winning 21 to 14. Allegheny looking to be able to answer the defensive stop that their defense had able to respond now on offense fair catch and Allegheny taking over and they will take it first down at their own 45 yard line Geneva's schedule coming up uh, we're looking at the Allegheny schedule right now uh, once again St. Vincent Bethany and Carnegie Mellon here comes the Geneva one they get a bye next week and really early in the season to get that bye, but they get a bye, then it's off the case, case Western Reserve and then to St. Vincent coming up on September the 30th. Johnson now in a shotgun formation once again. Worship behind him, looks downfield, sees Declan, completes the pass. A real short five yard pass, but a good important completion though. You keep seeing those hitch routes on the outside, especially with O'Brien. That's when you know that these corners are playing deep because they don't want to let anything over the top, especially with how late in the game we have. Um, however, Declan O'Brien is continuously able to take the yards that they give him. And that's a great ball by Johnson sticking it on him, let him get some yards. Yeah, nice completion on first down, setting up a nice short second and four now. They're now in plus territory in Geneva territory at the 49 yard line. Johnson now overseeing the defense. Man in motion across the field. Calls for the ball. Gets it. Looks back. Once again to Declan O'Brien. A very similar pattern to what he just ran. These Geneva corners are seeing like deja vu. They see consistently those hitch routes and those out routes by Declan O'Brien because they're trying to make sure that these corners start playing aggressive, start playing up, and then they can eventually take their shot deep. And it's about being disciplined enough to not take the bait at this point. Exactly, and then Geneva's defense is tackling well, their corners are tackling well, and they're not letting it get over, over top of them. However, they still need to stop those underneath routes because before they get too far down the field. Johnson waiting for the snap, gets it, looks downfield, feels some pressure, finds Declan one more time back on this near side of the field. The only difference, it looked as though it was five yards deeper than the one he ran just two plays ago. Exactly, they're just taking what the defense is giving them. And Geneva is okay with letting those, those passes up all day as long as Declan O'Brien doesn't get behind them. It's kind of a bend but don't break approach to playing defense at this point. 4.12 to go in the fourth quarter. Time absolutely not an issue at this point. That looks as though the corners are creeping up a little bit on Declan. Johnson back looking at Declan. He's going deep now. Declan's wide open in the end zone. Completion, touchdown. Those earlier plays just absolutely setting that up. That's all they were doing. Allegheny was just setting up that double move. Those corners have seen that out route all day. Declan really plants his foot to, like he's going to the outside of the field and then breaks up the field. And we see that huge, huge completion that we've been looking for all day. And Declan O'Brien finally finds the end zone. Declan O'Brien. It, he's really a great route runner, isn't he? Those routes are the, exactly how you want to run them. He sells it, that double move just enough to get past the defender and be wide open for the touchdown. And the extra point is good. Even though it was blocked, it still went over. We now have ourselves a tie game. It was deflected at the line of scrimmage, but it went over the goalpost. 21-21. It's all tied here. Allegheny and Geneva. You're watching D3 Football on KDKA+. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, 
Look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. This awesome gift is for my grandma. I use free pay policy from GB Life. What does it do? It accumulates cash value, helps protect my future insurability, and it may even earn dividends. What's so great about that? My policy will grow with me, plus I get access to the GBO Life Youth Leaders Program, scholarships, and more. Oh! You might be interested in a GBO Life annuity. You're probably thinking about retiring soon, right, Mrs. Jones? For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission. Providing great patient care. Delivering babies. Healing hearts. Detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. We have ourselves one wonderful football game here, tied up at 21, 356 to go in the fourth quarter, and you talk about halftime adjustments. They were made. Geneva just can't seem to figure out what they want to do on offense. And Allegheny seems to have all the answers from what they were trying to figure out in the first half. Saw that huge play by Declan O'Brien. 13 catches, 158 yards through the game already. Garrett Paxton with the kick. It's deep. Will McLean return it? He will from the five. Up the middle, trying to find a seam over on the left-hand side. He found it. Barker's out in front. Wonderful return all the way out to the 43-yard line. And we finally see McLean get his opportunity. He's only had one catch, but however, that first catch was for 63 yards. Um, he's a big, big time player that makes big time plays. And that's huge because it sets the junior offense up perfectly around that 45, 46 yard line. Um, it's where they've seen to be all day, but now they finally have to convert in the most crucial part of the game. Darren Myers, not known as being a passing quarterback, clearly a running quarterback. He has to figure out some way of getting Hilton McLean the ball downfield. Exactly, and Hilton McLean is going to eventually spring forward like we've seen with Declan O'Brien. These players of the game have been consistently waiting for their opportunity. Inside handoff once again, and my goodness, the Gators all over that. Big guy, number 79, Nigel Williams, just absolutely crushed the offensive line for Geneva on that one. We just see that pursuit to the ball, and we see that blowing up the middle of the field really stops that dive play and doesn't let Myers um, have the opportunity to pull it in time. 6'3", 325. He is a load, and when he lands on you, you're going to feel it for That's a That's a run stopper for sure. No doubt about it. Second and 11 now from their own 42. Myers back looking for somebody, trying to find McLean. Incomplete pass, just not able to make the connection. It's one of the few times we've seen Myers just strictly drop back, not fake any sort of uh, or any sort of dive. We see a little tip um, at, at the line of scrimmage. Um, doesn't let McLean get a handle on the ball here. And this is huge. This is a big third down, not only for Geneva, because you want to get this crowd quieted down. You want to feel the momentum come back. But for Allegheny, this is a big stop for them, too. If I'm the defensive lineman for Allegheny, I'm non-stop relentless pursuit right to the quarterback you already know that he's pulling back and he's dropping back for the touchdown Myers back fakes the pitch looking for somebody downfield great pressure completes the pass number five my goodness Logan Kent once again on a dump off he was looking for anybody to throw the ball to he was the release valve and he made the most of it Myers is super happy. Logan Kent was right there. We saw a defender right in his face. He was able to get it off. And Logan Kent just runs so tough, runs so far downhill. And then he kept fighting for even more yardage. And now they're in great field position, a little past the 35 at the 36-yard line. First and 10 now for Geneva. Time is on their side, 2.35 to go in the game. Myers takes it, decides to call his own number, keeps it, picks up three yards. And right now it's about getting in field goal position, isn't it? It's trying to make your kicker as most comfortable as possible, especially with the tight game and the potential to win the game. The closer the field goal, the better here, and Myers knows that, and he fights for every single yard he can. Gators have three timeouts remaining. You've got to wonder at this point at 2.10 with a running clock, when do you start calling those? Myers under center. 
handoff up the middle. And once again, Josh Seister just running with authority that time, able to pick up some real nice yardage and get it to uh, third down and within a couple of yards. And there's no better player you want to get you yards than Josh Seister. He knows that he, every single yard makes it that much easier for their kicker and that much towards a game-winning field goal here. And he just powers forward. And now third down, we'll see if they go back to him. Man in motion, Seister gets the ball up the middle, runs with authority one more time, able to get that very crucial first down all the way down now to the 24 of Allegheny. Josh Seister, he's just the man to go to. Now they have all that momentum on the, on the dive play to Seister, and now we'll see if they experiment a little bit more and maybe take a shot at the end zone. And we were wondering when they were going to start calling those timeouts, and they just called their first timeout with one minute, 31 seconds remaining, first and 10 now. They're getting really close to the red zone. They're clearly within field goal range. Geneva at this point, are you just looking to run the ball, keep it up the middle, figure out where your place kicker wants the ball on the side of the field and kind of like run that direction? You're trying to make sure you stay in bounds for one thing. And second of all, do not lose any yards. Do not take any sort of chances on maybe drop back passes or maybe even pitch routes that they've seen or maybe even the option and just sticking with the dive or maybe a QB follow with Myers. Um, we just want to make sure with the Allegheny defensive line, they're trying to go for those tackles for losses. They want to make a big play, blow up the middle, um, because they want to make that kicker for Geneva even more uncomfortable than he already is probably with this game on the line. And is this where you find defenses sometimes going for strips, maybe it's, more so than they're even going for tackles? Exactly. They're trying to make sure that keep them keep the guy up, trying to pound the ball, trying to strip it as much as possible, because a turnover here is what saves the game for them. When the score was a 21-7 and Geneva was looking as though they were doing what they wanted when they wanted, I was not thinking that we were going to get to a minute 31 in this game and have it be this close. 21-21, it's all tied up. Crucial drive, crucial down right now for Geneva. Myers under center, steps back, looks as though he's going to throw it, looking, scrambling, takes it himself up the middle a little bit, picks up about three yards on the play. A little surprised that they were looking at passing on that down? Oh, I'm so surprised by that play. Having Myers drop back after you're having all this momentum with the dive play, however, he saves it by eventually scrambling and getting three yards. I'm very surprised by the play call. However, they're, they're going to win the game. They're not going to put it um, to chance with the kicker. They want to try and score it and put it in the end zone. Just settle this thing as quickly as you can. That's what they're trying to do. That's it. So 123 to go in the game. All right, let's, let's take a look at the second half highlights from this game. And there have been a couple. They've been all on the Gators side of things. The one was this fumble that just occurred on the month exchange. And we see turnovers were the key to the flipping this game. And the Allegheny defense coming up huge. And now we see the little dive play by Worship, able to get through, keep running, running, running hard, and eventually find pay dirt uh, for Worship. And that made it 21-14. And then there was a crucial interception that was thrown by Geneva. This was big. Myers is with a very Aaron throw, and now we're back to action. Okay, second down. Geneva takes it, hands it off to Seister. Seister looking for the edge because he's going to go out of bounds. He does go out of bounds. Now here's, I got a question for you. He goes out of bounds, but he gets the first down. You're the coach. Do you pat him on the, the helmet and say, good job? Yeah, or is he getting in a little bit of trouble because he stopped the clock? No, you give him a pat on the helmet. Any first down is appreciated with this Geneva offense, giving them more opportunities for the end zone and even the opportunity to run down the clock even more, even though they stepped out of bounds. The Gators with just one timeout. And Geneva not scoring a point in this second half, looking to set up the potential game-winning field goal. Handoff up the middle. And Seister is able to pick up a couple of yards on the play. And the clock is now stopped at 105. Allegheny calling their last timeout. Allegheny's in desperation mode now. So if I'm Geneva's offense, I continuously feed Seister. Seister is going to get you those much needed yards and make it that much easier for your place kicker um, to eventually put one in for the scoring uh, for the final score. However, you know Seister's reliable. You know that he's going to get the yards. You also know that he's got to put two hands on the ball because mm -hmm. he cannot lose this football. No one on this offense can give up the ball because that is what stops them from winning this game. 
All right, we're looking at a run play, right? 100%. 100%. 100%. Maybe a quarterback draw just to kind of keep the defense guessing a little. Maybe you get to see something open up that you didn't realize you had. But at that point, if you don't get another first down, they are in position where they could get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Do you kick the field goal on third down? Or do you wait for fourth down, run more of the clock out, and have your place kicker kick it as time is running out? The only way I see running a play on third down is that you use your dive. You don't try and even think about pulling it because then that gives the opportunity for maybe a fumble exchange. Um, if I run a play on third down, it's going straight to Seister up the middle. Here we go. Second down, seven to go. Myers, man in motion. Seister gets it on a dive play up the middle. No, I bought the fake to Seister. Myers kept it, ran around the left-hand side, scores a touchdown, and now here comes a flag. Now the big question is, when did the flag occur? Was it during the play or was it after the touchdown was scored? The officials having a conversation right now. We are waiting for an answer from Andre King. And the Allegheny defense was thinking what I was thinking, and it's going to Seister all day. So we do have the touchdown. Geneva goes up 27-21, but there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after that touchdown. It looks as though it's going to be enforced on uh, the kickoff. And now a very important extra point attempt being made by Geneva at this point. Ryan Rittler, it's up and it is no good. No good, 27-21. All right, we will pause here for a moment. A minute, two seconds left to go in this game. Geneva's winning 27-21 over Allegheny. Do not miss the next 62 seconds. We'll come back with more D3 football on KDKA+. Plus. We raised $5,000. When you purchase life insurance and annuity products from GBU Life, you also have more opportunities to give back to your community. GBU matches donations you make up to $1,000 per member. I have GBU Life Insurance. Oh, wow. I have a GBU Youth Policy. Whoa. We've, We've got, got GBU, GBU annuities. annuities. Hey. Our $5,000 just turned into $10,000. That's, That's a, a lot, lot of big checks. checks. Find out more at GBU.org. Maya, can you come in here, please? Already. Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Well, yeah, that's my so brother. Far. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't go in tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. The makes the catch over the Hobart defender, right. And that is six points well, on I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. I started working out with my dad when I was 12 years old. He said, well, everybody else is sleeping, you up working. It's gonna pay off for you. <laughs> Biggest decisions I ever had to make my junior year. I had my daughter at the time, so, you know, I'm like, I gotta provide. You know, I had the opportunity to leave early. I had to make a decision. Was I gonna leave or was I gonna come back to college for an extra year? Just talking about the crowd, talking about this shit. Um, once I made that decision to come back, my mindset wasn't just to be good, it was to be great. Wow. Gino DeMarco, he fooled everybody in the entire place and everybody who was watching on television. Everybody thought it was going to be Seister, and he decided to go ahead and let Myers keep it on the quarterback keeper over the left-hand side. What a very wily move by that 31-year veteran head coach. And that's also all Myers, too. Myers knowing that everyone's keying on that inside inside dive and then he pulls it and then untouched going in the end zone for the biggest score of the game all right the kickoff from the 20 once again because of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the touchdown it is taken by the deep man at the 22 yard line able to get it out near the 40 so allegheny now 56 seconds left and you got to move the ball a good 60 61 maybe 62 yards at this point and I'm guessing it's the Declan O'Brien show if there's going to be a victory here today. 13 catches, 158 yards, why not? And then you also see that you have time. You have 56 seconds. However, you have no timeouts. You kind of are in a little bit of a des desperation mode. However, you can still take maybe one shot over the middle. Snap. 
Johnson back to pass, looking deep, trying to find somebody, scrambling, looking for space, throws it to the sideline, and just looking to... It was close to a receiver, but it was really about trying to set things up for another play. Exactly, and then they know they had nothing in the middle of the field. They tried to go to the outsides. However, these corners are playing great for Geneva, and now we need to see what they do on this second down play, which is a very crucial part of this game. Second and 10, 48.7 seconds left to go. It's second down. Ball's on their 38-yard line. Three wide receivers are wide. Two to the right to the wide side. Johnson makes a man go in motion. Declan's in motion. He's a slot receiver. Johnson back to pass, looking for Declan. Does he find him? No, he finds another open receiver. Great completion, and then knocked out of bounds. It seemed like Geneva, when Declan ran the route, everybody went to Declan and left the receiver wide open on the play. And that's Curtis Noblock with a big, big catch. And then you see that Declan O'Brien's over the middle. He runs a little out and up route, which draws so much attention from the Geneva defenders. And then Noblock's able to just sneak away and get a huge first down to set them up better in plus territory. And was able to get out of bounds with a little bit of help from the Geneva defensive back. But the clock stopped by doing so. Johnson back to pass looking. He finds a receiver over the middle. Number 82, great reception by number 82, Ian Dursey once again. And now it's hurry up, 25 seconds. He snaps the ball and then spikes the ball. Jack Johnson looking for a stop of the clock, gets it, 26.4 seconds left to go. And they are calling it third down. Great reception over the middle. And then we see Dursey just continuously wide open. Same thing with no block on the previous play. All the attention is on Declan O'Brien for good reason, for good reason. However, they're leaving some of these other receivers wide open. They're also allowing them to take it over the middle of the field, knowing that they have to spike the play because the clock's running. And the coaching staff for Allegheny, uh, Brayden's just absolutely beside himself. He thought for sure that was a first down completion because it looks as though if you look at the sticks where the third down marker is and where the lead chain marker is, it's within inches. I'm not sure I can get my foot in between that space. And he's just, why are, did you guys not mark it for a first down? Because it would have automatically stopped the clock for them. But now they're looking at third down, inches to go. 26.4 seconds left to go in this game. And now you're wondering, what do you call at this point? It, 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 it takes so many plays out of the playbook because you weren't able to get that first down marker. That first down spot is super, super important because not only are you fighting the clock, you're also still fighting the downs. Third down, you still need to get that first down in order to get more than two plays. You have enough plays um, with the time limit. However, in order to get the first down, maybe before you get the first down, um, you need to make sure you get a play. You can't run the ball, obviously, with no timeouts. So pass is the only option here. And then it's kind of limiting even those pass routes to at least get the first down. All right, the officials are huddling right behind the football, right at the 35, and you have to be wondering what is going on within that huddle at this point. I understand what they're doing over at Geneva, and they're trying to set up their defense, and they're clearly keying on Declan O'Brien, and I understand what Allegheny is doing at this point, what they want to be able to accomplish, but what was the huddle all about? We're about to find out. Here's the referee. And they did end up giving them the first down. Interesting. They gave them the first down after the spike ball. They apparently deciding to reposition the ball. They don't have the convenience of instant replay. You gotta wonder how they decided to do that. But they gave them first down and then kind of the spike. And now it is second down and 10. Johnson back to pass, looking over the middle. He's going to run up the middle, and Geneva sandwiching him and bringing him down around the 25, 26-yard line, 19 seconds to go, 18, 17, spikes the ball. It is now third and two, maybe three yards to go, 17 seconds left. What do you do? Now it's only go to your playmakers. You got to go to Declan O'Brien on the outside, maybe even hit Austin Williams um, on a little bit of a corner route or maybe up the seam. However, if you get tackled in the middle of the field, especially um, if you don't get the first down, you mm -hmm. can't spike this ball. 
17 seconds left, third and three. Everybody's in tight. Man in motion, Johnson gets the snap, it's high. Pressure coming from Geneva's defense. He throws it off to an outlet. Number 82, the tight end once again, getting a very crucial reception. And it looks as though first down yardage, the referees are waving them through. So he gets the completion, gets the first down, stops the clock. Perfect play for Allegheny. Johnson was trying to go to worship over the middle. However, he wasn't, he was definitely going to be short of the touchdown if he got tackled inbounds. With the limited amount of time left, we probably wouldn't have seen an end of the game. 15 seconds left, first and 10, 23 yard line. Johnson back to pass. He has all day over the middle. Well defended by Geneva. Two men covering Austin Williams as he was going over the middle and a surprising route that he was willing to run over the middle like that and throw that pass. Exactly, right over the middle. So sometimes it's a blessing in this guy to see an incompletion because we, we, don't, we see a stoppage in clock. Get him second down, have another chance to go deep for the end zone. 11 seconds, balls on the 23 yard line. Second and 10. Where's Declan O'Brien? Near side, bottom of the screen. Johnson gets a snap, looks to his right, steps up, over the middle, intercepted by Geneva. Intercepted. There are some that are calling for an inter interference call. The referees say absolutely not. Geneva, just an absolute killer interception with just four seconds left to go. And Geneva, Looking to come out on top of this game, 27-21. And Johnson had Dursey over the middle, just a little bit, but maybe a tip ball, underthrown for sure. And then you see a great play by Geneva to seal this game. And the flag is on the play. It's on the bench. It looks as though it is on the bench because it came well after the interception. And here's the call. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against... Allegheny, that is the call from Andre King. What an absolutely great drive and just so heartbreaking at times to be able to see a play, a drive end like that. And we've seen Johnson all day just trying to force balls a little too much. Um, he's trying to make a play with only four seconds left in the game and he had a receiver open and just a little bit of a poor throw. But Gusevich with the huge interception here to seal this game. Now we're looking at four seconds left and a player of the game. And we have a couple of contenders. Clearly, Declan O'Brien and his performance, even in a losing effort, is worthy of great consideration. So oftentimes, though, the player of the game goes to the winning team. And it's hard to not consider Darren Myers, what he did in the first half uh, second leading rusher in the first half for Geneva and that fake to score a touchdown here in the fourth quarter with just a couple not even two minutes remaining and you know a new quarterback Myers he needs to make a statement win and he wanted this he this win was on the back of him Seister with a lot of uh, key contribu contributions however Myers just coming out and really playing a great game trying not to turn over the ball and made that crucial touchdown at the end of the game 27-21 that is the final here in Meadville. The Geneva Golden Tornadoes coming back from halftime, not able to do much of anything at all, Alex, in the entire second half until that final drive, and they were able to get that touchdown. I mean, you talk about great uh, halftime adjustments by uh, Allegheny. They seem to make them but just not enough of them and being able to capitalize enough over those turnovers as well. And it's hard to go against a Geneva team that controls the clock so much to go down two touchdowns in halftime. Allegheny played a great second half. However, they put themselves in a little too much of a hole early on. They still had a chance to win the game, but they, they were kind of lowing on little, a little low on time at the end. However, Geneva played a great game, especially on the last, last drive. Let's look at some highlights from the game. And this is that first pass, big play to McLean, 63 yards. He was our player of the game, player of the watch. Um, McLean coming up huge. And then Seister just plowing through for the touchdown. He had a great game as well. Which at, we saw the success with the, with the dive play. And mm -hmm. then we see Allegheny, Johnson, finding Williams in the end zone with a great play design on that route. 
tied it up at seven. And then it was really Geneva from that point forward. You see that Logan Kent ran great all day, and he was able to bail uh, a lot of throws by Myers out for get crucial games for first downs. Myers with another touchdown there, too, as well. And then here's this big fumble recovery. Geneva having real difficulties in the second half holding on to the ball. A lot of miscommunications. And then we see Worship plowing his way through um, to, to really start them off well in the second half. And then Myers making an error throw to Osias. Great pickoff by Allegheny defense. And then this interception that was really a backbreaker for Allegheny. Interception at the one, two yard line in order to stop that drive that was almost a short points for Allegheny. And then we see Jack Johnson going deep, Declan O'Brien on the double move. He was setting that double move up all day and that was great play design by Allegheny as well. And then this play faked out everybody everywhere with uh, this quarterback keeper scores the touchdown and gets the final score 27-21. And <clears throat> I got to tell you, as I'm looking at the way this whole thing breaks down, I don't know how we don't give it to Darren Myers as the player of the game. Myers played a great game on the ground, um, struggled a little bit with his arm by throwing those, that costly interception. However, he was able to do enough, especially when the defense started to shut off Seister because they did not, Allegheny did not want Seister to beat them. Instead, they wanted Myers to beat them. And then, however, Myers stepped up to the occasion with a great touchdown towards the end of the game. And with him being named the player of the game, and he is invited to the All-American Bowl game on December the 16th at U.S. Bank Stadium. So once again, we're looking at a final here. 27-21, Allegheny over Geneva. You've been watching D3 football on KDKA+. Plus. Next week, we will be at WNJ. Before we take that, we leave. Any thoughts about uh, that matchup coming up next week? That'll be a huge matchup, especially for WNJ coming off another statement win this week. All right. D3 football next Saturday, Washington and Jefferson. And once again, final score, 27-21. Gators falling to the Golden Tornadoes. D3 football on KDKA+.